Electronic Music Podcast. All right. Here we are. Well, here we are. <laughs> What's up, man? <laughs> We're doing it. Oh, I've been excited to do this for a while. I know. I know. There it is. I think, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. You're good. Uh, the Voice of Electronic Music Podcast, number 40, with Caleb Hudson, a.k.a. a boy named Barbara. How's it going, man? feels so official when you say it like that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> gotta, gotta announce it so everyone knows uh, what, they're, what they're getting themselves into. 40, that's kind of a milestone number. It is. It is. I didn't even think about 37. You know, it was my, it was my, my birth year podcast. What? Just rolled right past it, just Whoa. like my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> just, nothing to see here, nothing folks. See Keep here. going. Keep going. <laughs> are you going to celebrate any milestones? Like, are you going to get to episode number 50 and throw a party? Or, like, when, it, when are you going to reach a milestone that's worth noting? For sure, 100. Okay, 100. We got a uh, bunch of triple we, digits. Yes. We, we, did a, uh, we did a mild celebration for 1,000 uh, downloads that you actually told me about. Oh. You're welcome. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, I feel like I feel like a uh, hundred, a thousand, um, maybe a yearly. Oh, we'll do a cake day like on Reddit. Yeah, like oh, that's great because you yeah. you're gonna have the milestones of the numbers won't correlate to the years that you've been doing. You got- yeah, but then I, I got to figure out what. Oh, I'll just look at the date that I aired the first one, the pilot. And then that will be forever. That will be the year that you celebrate. It's VEM Day. Yes, VEM Day. I love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So you're. Uh, we, we were just uh, for for those of you that don't know, we were just in here uh, playing some of uh, Caleb's new music. He's releasing um, shortly here, right? Yeah. Uh, under right. a boy named Barbara. Mm-hmm. That's. Uh, it's, it's all brand new, and I've got about six new tracks. Yeah. And we just finished them. And uh, checking them against all different types of speaker sounds, mastering process, getting them ready, getting them out there, and they come out next week. Next week, yeah, it's perfect timing, perfect timing. And this was, you know, being able to play them back here. And um, you had asked me before, you know, about like why when you go out and you you watch shows or watch DJs or whatever, the songs sound mm-hmm. so much bigger, you know? Mm-hmm. And I was like, dude, it's the amplification. Mm-hmm. And it's the setting too, mm-hmm. right? But so much of it, I really believe is, is the amplification. When you are in the room with, you know, 30, 40, 100,000 watts, whatever, yeah. um, it's just different. Yeah, and it was such a different experience to hear the music that I've spent so much time with and have such an intimate relationship with put through that amplification. It just, mm completely changed how I would experience it. And yeah. these songs that I've got this relationship with transformed and I got to experience them completely different. It was incredible. Right, right. And, and the reason why I love this, uh, this club and this room in particular um, is it just, uh, it's very even. Mm-hmm. It's, very, it's a very even system. And um, it just, to me, it's always sounded like, uh, like, like you know, computer, uh, speaker, mon- studio speakers. Yeah. Stu- studio monitors. Um, and it is, there's no weird splitting of the frequencies, you know, through the crossovers and that sort of thing. I'm, I'm sure there is. I, I know there is. Um, but for whatever reason, it just sounds more natural, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, so a really good place, to, which is, you know, we have headroom here. Um, you know, I check my own mixes here. Um, it's just, it's a good, it's a good sounding system. The, the system is home to so many memories for me because I've spent so many nights at Halcyon dancing in the room and uh, I've seen so many greats behind these decks and something about the spirit that inhabits these walls and the legends that have been here and the memories that have happened here to, just to hear my own music come through that sound system is incredible and you I follow your podcast all the time and you're always talking to people who have had accomplished careers at some level and uh, I'm a brand new emerging person in the space Mm -hmm. and so each one of these experiences for me is like a brand new world of experience sensory experiences and new emotions that you get to experience for the first time and it's like riding a roller coaster for the the very first time so exciting it's so exciting and then we had you know uh bruce mcvon's daughter in here you know who's who's you know however old she is what like six or something and you know, running around, ages, a, yeah. running around, a, running around a nightclub, getting the full experience. You know, like <laughs> like she, she's gonna go to, back to school on on you know tomorrow and just be like, yeah, what'd you do? Oh, I was at a nightclub with my dad. <laughs> you know, I got to change the lights. You know, like <laughs> I I think that is 
you know, who knows what is going to happen when, in her future, but just growing up immersed in electronic music, <sighs> oh, man. where you wait, you literally, your first memories are inside nightclubs, and yeah. you've been behind the decks at Halcyon since you were, what, seven years old? Right. Imagine the future that is ahead of individual <laughs> in terms of love or hate for the space. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we'll right. see. You never you know. know. Yeah. <laughs> Could go either way. Could go either way. <laughs> well, you heard uh, the, the podcast with Lex. Oh, she yeah. was talking about her her son is uh, just so uh, is so accustomed to the stage and uh, crowds of thirty thousand people. Hmm. He'll just walk out on the stage and be like, "Mom, you know, like, <laughs> like you know." She's like, "No, no, <laughs> I'm working. I'm working." Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it gets in your veins, I'm sure, at some level. For sure, yeah. Well, I, I think that there's no uh, no coincidence when you when you see you know uh, Miley Cyrus, you know, mm-hmm. and and people that have had parents in music and that sort of thing, and have grown up in studios and grown up in tour buses and kind of all yeah. that. You know, just just feels like home, feels natural. You know, if I'm ever so lucky to actually have kids, mm-hmm. that's going to be my strategy from the get go. Like have them fall asleep to house music. Yes, yeah. Exactly. Do they have that like house music for babies, like a lullaby house, house music house? for babies? Do we can we get that? I think we uh, there's a there's just a genre <laughs> opportunity there. We can raise our our kids on it from the get go, and right. I'll just I'll just what, have them. What's, like, what's it going to sound like? Like uh, maybe. Um, uh, Baby Shark house remix. <laughs> <laughs> Baby Shark, a boy named Barbara remix. <laughs> I'm gonna create this just so I can audition for the role of godparent for your kid. Yes. If you if you have kids. Yes. I want the to be the goddad and officially be called Barbara. Well, you will. Yeah. Be. Yes. So yeah. this is the goddad Barbara. If I decide to have kids, <laughs> you are first in line. I start to campaign early. So yes. That yeah, <laughs> good. You make a good politician. Right, right. Yeah, Just yeah. in the event, I've got all my bases covered. Right, yeah. <laughs> Baby shark. It would work. It yeah. would work. If, the, if there's a nanny involved, they'll be playing like normal lullaby music and the kid won't sleep. It'll scream. Yes. Like, oh, no, no, no. The kid only falls asleep to techno. Right. <laughs> really? it needs to be lulled by sleep by 50 hertz. <laughs> Hard style. It's like how we wake him up. <laughs> <laughs> that would work. I would fall asleep to that, you know? <laughs> Maybe that is what happened to you, Scott. Yes, I think so. That could explain a lot about your trajectory yeah. in life. Yeah. Maybe you didn't know that your parents started you off early. I grew up next to a, uh, a power factory and a train depot. Ah. And uh, the, the vibrations actually shook something loose. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean like something on the wall or something loose inside of you? Both. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <Not important. laughs> Something loose on the walls of my brain. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still picking up the pieces? Still picking up the pieces, yes. <laughs> Which is going to be the uh, name of my next hour. Picking up the picking pieces. Up the piece. <laughs> <laughs> Super depressing. <laughs> Not doing that. <laughs> oh. oh. That is, uh, when, when I was starting to work on songs that I wanted to put on this project on my first EP, and I was knowing that, like, you know, I, I didn't want to start with a big body of work, and I was yep. trying to figure out. I had a whole list of song ideas, and um, I I would say probably twenty five ideas made the short list, and then I just decided I want this all to be living in Friday night space, mm. Saturday night space, where the week is over and you're done. You're had a you've had a hell of a week. Mm. Maybe you've had a good week. But whatever it is, you found your way to fun. Yeah. There it is, Saturday night. You're yeah. with your gang, you're with your posse, and hopefully you're smiling. Right. It was in that space that I decided to just cross out all the ones that were depressing. All my song ideas that felt like a, just a buzzkill at that, <laughs> at that headspace. And if you couldn't like think of the song idea and be like, yes, to Saturday night, mm-hmm. the, uh, about 15. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I take a, I take a similar uh, a similar motto for uh, dating recently. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's got to be. Oh, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, any any potential uh, date has to be a fuck yes, right? Yes. Yeah, like like this. I believe that fully. Do I want to? Uh, if it's not a fuck yes, then yes. I'm then I'm only going to be half assing it, right? And there's other things I could be doing or, or want to be doing, and it's not fair to the other person, right? You so, don't want. 
want anybody that's trying to talk themselves into dating you. No, yeah, right. Yeah. And you don't want anyone that's sort of lukewarm about no. the prospect of dating you. So as a person that on the other end of that, whoever is like, you know, in courtship with you at any level, that's, yeah. I grew up conservative, so <laughs> courtship, courtship isn't like commonly, in my background, we actually called that. Almost, oh, you must refer to me as sire as well. <laughs> <laughs> so if someone is courting you, sire Brio. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they're excited about this new fuck yes, yes principle. Exactly, yes. It is true. It's really true. It's like some words to live by. Yeah, <laughs> but it's it's a great way to select your songs too. Yeah, you know, if it's not a fuck yes, um, it, it, you know, because you do. You got to be. You come up with so many ideas as a musician. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know I've got countless ones myself. You know, and it, a lot of times too. It sounds like you kind of pre-selected them before you almost even like finished them, right? You kind oh of, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, and my creative process is a little bit different in that way, and from pretty much every other producer I've talked to and most common that I've run into mm. in electronic music is that people start with sound design and that many people get into the space and they let the sounds that they're playing with inspire them and where they're going in a track. Right. Uh, I like to do something different and I sit down with a big piece of paper and I actually blueprint the song. And so I just write out in, and I vision at the time I'm writing the blueprint in my own unique language, I guess a visual language for music, uh, drop is here, drums are there, voice is here. Um, I'm picturing tone and feel and style. And what, and, I, and I'm, I try to take a page from your playbook and think about where am I when I'm hearing this? Yes. You know, who am I with? What, and yeah. what am I experiencing? Soundtrack to someone's life is a big responsibility. You're creating an experience for them in, and hopefully a memory. Right. Uh, and so I, I start there. So that as I get into sound design and I'm making decisions on uh, shaping you know, bass, I can know that, oh, uh, this song, I'm already, even if I don't know what it sounds like, I know that what it feels like. Mm. So that way I can decide, even though I found a sound that's really, really cool, that sound is too, um, it's too aggressive, it's too heavy, I right. need something lighter. Or I've found something that's really great sound, it's just too happy for what I need. Yeah. And I can make decisions early on in the creative process because I have a destiny in mind yes. for the song. Right. So I use the book to do it. This makes it so much easier. You don't have to think about it as much. Well, yeah, and I, I don't, I think it's harder when you start, I don't think there's any wrong way to do it. I think if you just, if you're letting the sound design guide you, it's di more difficult to make decisions on what feels, what, what is right or wrong mm. in any situation because you're just sort of going by what's cool or not, what's yeah. sort of like a vibe or not. Um, and both can lead to great destiny. So it's not like there's a right or wrong. But right. I like to start with a vision. Yeah, yeah. So okay. do you, do you, uh, you kind of segment your, your sound design from your like kind of the, arrangement and, and composition? Then. Yeah, because I already have a rough arrangement in my head when I start the sound design, before I, before I even pick a kick. Like, oh, wow. all of this blueprint happens before anything happens in the wow. music. crazy. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's totally different. And so that when I sit down to my die, sit down with purpose versus sitting down um, just to do some blind exploration, which is a different thing, and it's, it, can be, um, it can be fun to do that as just something to give around, you know, yeah. goof around. And, and sometimes that works, it. it works well. But Without a doubt. Yeah. Without yeah. a doubt. Because yeah. sometimes you just got to play. But yeah. when I actually sit down to like create, mm -hmm. I've already destined in my mind what I'm there to do to create. So right. that way I know how to make the decisions early on to get me to where I'm going. Right. And mm -hmm. there are plenty of surprises along the way. Yeah. Yeah. You, the, you, like I always say, you have endless creative ideas. You know what I mean? When I think about your creative process and the songs that you've got in the realm of the ideas swirling around Scott Bria, mm -hmm. um, I think that there's like a whole host of them and you've got all these song ideas and then you went to Burning Man and then everything that wasn't Playa fell to the ground. <laughs> Everything's cutting room floor. We'll get back to you later ideas. Yes, yes. Like I only want the Playa ideas yes, now. Yeah. The rest of you can just go sit in the <laughs> corner by yourself. <laughs> Am I wrong? 100%, 100%. It's, <laughs> you know, cause you get that, that, that juice of uh, inspiration and you gotta, you gotta run with it. You know wow, what I mean? Like, you got lots of juice when you were there. Yes. It's going oh, yeah. strong still. There's yeah. no end in sight. No, yeah. I mean, I'm just... I got that inspiration, and I think I think something like Burning Man is life changing enough to uh, to, to to be that thing, that catalyst that kind mm. of helps drive something like that for a long time. Yeah, maybe the rest of my life. That's you know right. what I mean? Um, and not to be you know not to say that I, I won't finish my other things, but <clears throat> also too like you know my friends with benefits stuff. I found myself kind of um, oddly. Considering you know it was, a, it was a bit of a difficult burn yeah. you know considering I told you you know kind of uh, the whole experience but um, you know it also amazing and fantastic mm -hmm. and the the best time I've, of my life you know mm -hmm. and so I came back not 
really, I sat down and tried to finish some of my songs that I had for Friends with Benefits, and it just wasn't, I wasn't in the right headspace. I was actually, like, happy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> not, 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 <laughs> not, not that uh, I'm, I'm usually unhappy, um, or that that's what it takes to make Friends with Benefits stuff, but my Friends with Benefits stuff is more moody, I think, you know? All of this makes me so sad because you know that in the multiple personalities that is, you know, creative personalities, creative personas that yes. you've invented for yourself. Yes. FWB is by far my favorite brand <laughs> yes. for you and I lobby for it daily. I think it <laughs> yeah. should be your only brand. I think it is right. your hero brand. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if I will ever succeed in championing FWB. And so <laughs> when I hear you say this, I'm sad, not because of the music and I'm yeah. so glad you're following your creative heart and your creative passion just yeah. because I love FWB as a brand so yeah. much. Yeah. And I have a big marketing background so I can picture a logo and I can see right. like, oh my gosh, this is going to be huge. <laughs> so I hope yeah. you get sad real quick. I hope you get sad. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I have, I have a good amount of sad boy in me. <laughs> can someone please break this boy's heart, please? Right. Yes. <laughs> we need more FWB. We need more material. I've actually never uh, wished someone had been sad before. Now you have. Now I have. <laughs> God, <laughs> for my own selfish gain. Right, yeah. With the Playa stuff that you're making now, what sub-persona of you is that going to come out on? Uh, Scott Brio. Okay, that's good. Yeah. I get confused. Right? Yeah. This, well, I, I'm also Have conflicted. you thought about making another? I, 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 <laughs> collect them the last all. thing I, mean, I need. Yeah, collect them all. <laughs> I'm going to be like fucking like Pokemon of <laughs> music producers. <laughs> the 15. You're right, collect the, them all. Yeah, 15 yeah, different... Yeah. Yeah. This is great. Okay, but, so you know, it's Scott Brio. So I am a little bit torn because compared to the other stuff I think that I've showed you, you know, my kind of previous Scott Brio stuff, it's a little bit, it's a little bit, it's more like playa. It's more, yeah. more rolling and more, you know, uh, longer songs and, you know. Um, so I think I might just, I'm, I, I, I think I'm just going to keep it under Scott Brio. I, I don't think it's different enough, though, to where people are going to be like, what is this, you know? Well, uh, the truth is, and, and it is, it is so true. I, I was told this today that um, don't forget that nobody cares. Exactly. Right. <laughs> and I thought that is, might cares. be the best thing I've ever heard. Yes. It is true. Right. We, we do care about a lot of things, but they all mm -hmm. are about ourselves. Exactly. And right. We might listen to you, but we don't care about no. you. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> so do whatever it is you're going to yeah, do. Yeah. Uh, and I love the idea of, of Scott Brio, too, as your, as your brand, because at the end of the be who you are. Yeah. You know, and there's busy, totally. my, myself included, we're all busy making up names. Uh, and, and at the end of the day, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's you. And it doesn't matter. You know, it's like, it really, uh, it doesn't matter. There's been, there's been groups. Uh, I, I, oh, I remember uh, Bonobo was a good uh, example of this. I had heard about Bonobo, like mm. just in passing for probably, you know, a year, two years, maybe three years before I ever even listened to him. I was like, that's a stupid name. <laughs> 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 Never listened to any Hard of judge. it. Hard, Hard judge. Hard judge on yes. the name. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, then I listened to his stuff finally. I don't remember how I, I, I finally went, I came to listen to it, but of course fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm like obsessed. And it's funny that once you consume the, the content, it really changes yeah. your perception of the title completely. Because yeah. now I don't think it's stupid at all. That's right. I think it's great. I think That's it's completely right. fitting. And I remember reading an article about, uh, uh, from him or an interview, and he was like, yeah, you know, he said something to the effect of, like, kind of regret the name, like, it just it seems kind of silly, and I wish I'd come up with something more meaningful or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, that's just the classic, the classic artist's toil. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and names are a point in time, right? They come right. out of a space in your life. And right then you live with it. Yes. If, if you're lucky enough to get that hit or that success right. or like a following, right. you, it's so difficult to change it. You can't yeah. evolve it right. like you can in other ways. And that's why you feel, you know, you have all these examples of people that just add, like, you know, they take a page from your playbook and they just mm -hmm. keep adding some brands. <laughs> exactly right. More yeah. personas because you can't change them when you start them. <laughs> and, uh, My index is, uh, <laughs> it's got many pages. It's, it's I think the, the, power of a name, a name can be really powerful and yeah. a name is important. And uh, when, especially even our own names that were given, oftentimes there's like family legacy involved and there's like lineage involved and someone, your parents are likely trying to pass down, you know, some sort of connection to your roots and where mm. you've come, where mm. you've come from mm. and trying to give you, a, you know, that as a, as a gift as you're going into the world. And uh, the thing, the fact of the matter is that you don't get to pick it and you don't get to 
um, connect with it, you're so early, you're just sort of given this mm. as your place to be. And when I look at my my family and like where I came from and my lineage and my legacy of the people that are around me, there's no doubt that um, the person that I connect with it's so deeply and resonate with most is actually my grandma. Oh. And I often think that, um, you know, as far as a middle name, I assume you commonly a family name or mm. whatever. And, you know, my case, it's my dad's name and he's got my, his dad's name as his middle name. Um, that if it weren't for that, she was a girl and that I would, I'm a boy mm. that I would actually have that. I, if there's someone I would pick a name for, oh, yeah. I would pick my grandma's name, yeah. Barbara, which that's, is her name. That's awesome. And so uh, today I, I DJ in her honor yeah. Um, and for a number of reasons, yeah. but it's, it's a, it's a cool way for me to sort of say, um, to myself that in this chance, when I actually do get to pick my name, mm. that I get to like pick and just honor her legacy, her lineage, our connection, our special connection right. and bring forth into the world that all that she continues to, um, embody. And so it's like, it's, it was a really special process for me to pick the name. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't sure. So I, I, in trying to find like how the best way to do it, I actually started with calling myself Barbara Steele, which is her, her first name and her, and her maiden name, Barbara nice. Steele. And I thought, oh, that's, that's great. I'll be Barbara Steele. And it'll be kind of like a cheeky joke where people will be like thinking like, where's Barbara? Oh, that's Barbara. And then maybe they'll remember me. And I mm. thought, oh, this would be hopeful. Mm. Well, what actually happened is I just confused everybody because <laughs> everyone was looking for a girl named Barbara. <laughs> and uh, I once got hired to do a set. So I went out and I played the set and I I've had a great time. And um, after the guy um, who organized the event and hired me came up and said, man, you were great. And that set was awesome. But whatever happened to that girl? Why didn't she show up? <laughs> <laughs> this barber girl is real flake. Like, That's where hilarious. the hell is she? And here I was, and it was even like, I even had a banner behind me that said Barbara Steele in big letters. <laughs> and he still didn't get it. Like, like no, I'm, I'm Barbara. I'm, That's the joke. Like, right, I'm yeah, Barbara. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, no, this doesn't work. I need to work on this. And I thought, okay, I need to clarify to everyone. Yeah. I'm a boy right. named Barbara. Yeah. Let's be clear. Let's be upfront about that. That's hilarious. Uh, and I had second guessed it and I thought, um, I went, kept going through the process, kept working on my music, kept getting ready to like step into this. And um, I started thinking like, oh, and there were a number of people that were saying like, oh, the name's not great. Mm. Could be better. And I don't know if you ever second guessed any of your multiple personas, but <laughs> I certainly started gone to a space where I actually started to second guess it. And uh, yeah. so I tried on new names yeah. and they just didn't feel right in something. It, it's creative. It's so squishy. It's so ambiguous. It's so, but it's, it comes down to feel. Yeah. And you know, like, Oh, and, and I think for me trying on other names and trying to move away from the name Barbara was just total confirmation that that's mm. where I belonged the whole time. Yeah. And even if it, um, can be complex for people because it can mm -hmm. bring up issues around gender. Um, it can speak to a number of issues. Um, in fact, why there aren't more, you know, female DJs in the space. And mm -hmm. like, there's a number of topics that can come up with choosing a name. That's like, I'm a man with a more traditionally organized female name. Right. Yeah. It's like, I mean, it's not, it's not, that's not entirely different from, you know, Kelly or something, you know, that's exactly, that's exactly right. Uh, there are a few more, like, exactly, there's a yeah. few more uh, traditionally ambiguous names. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Barbara is less so, yeah. but um, I, for whatever reason, yeah. that's the... That's the yeah. Well, it's funny, uh, you know, because when you're born and your, your parents uh, name you, they're naming somebody that they don't know yet. That they don't know, exactly right. You know what yes, I mean? Yes, that's right. Like, this person that's is what not... I think about all the time. Yeah. They don't know. No, and so, I mean, I, you know, I... You know, I, uh, I I think that anybody that comes up with an alias for themselves at some point, you know, for whatever reasons, whether it's creative or they just want to change their name. You know, some people are not creative, just want to change their name. I've heard of people doing that. Yes. Yeah. Many people have done it. <laughs> um, I think uh, I think it's completely fair because it's like, you know, you, you become this person that yeah, right. uh, that you that you've always meant to be or you were always going to be. That's right. Um, but, um, you know, and, and there's something, too, to be said for, look, I just want to go by what I want to go by. You know what I mean? Because it is you. It is you, right. right. <laughs> no one knows you like you do. Exactly. And if there's a, like, a handle that fits you and you like, right. you right. should decide that. Your parents don't know you yeah. when they name you. Exactly. Uh, do you th get into the, the, name, the meaning of names? Do you know what your name means? Uh, well, my real name? I mean, you know my... Well, right, but I mean, like, yeah. you're, like Scott. Do you know what Scott means? Um, I haven't looked in... No, I don't know. Not Scott. Uh, Brio means vibrance uh, and energy. 
Oh, in, in that's cool. In Latin. And that's, that's actually really cool. That's actually why I chose it. That, that is an alias. My middle name is Scott. But, you know, uh, Brio I chose because I wanted something that was short and compact and went with Scott. Scott is also, you know, I realized, too, that Scott's a very percussive sounding yeah. name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it, when, I, when, I say, when I say my, my real name, it doesn't really be, it gets people, huh? huh, you know, but then I say Scott like in a loud environment and it just, it just works. You know, it's like people get it and they never, it's never confused with anything. Um, and so that was kind of a nice little silver lining. Um, but also, you know, uh, Brio, it, it's kind of always just, it's, you know, my playa name. Is happy feet, you know, because I'm always, I'm always dancing. And, yeah, it's like, you know, yeah, you have got it. Like, you've got this. Like, <laughs> when you're in the zone, and I've been fortunate to go to a lot of shows with you. Yeah. Um, and when you're in the zone, you do from a distance. You can tell that you're enjoying your space. You're enjoying <laughs> yeah. the space, and I think that's so beautiful. The, um, the fact that we get to be a part of a community of music around electronic music. Mm should bring forth a vibrant energy, yeah. right? And yeah. the work that you do as a creative on this planet should ignite the vibrant energy within you, your life force, yes. whatever's keeping you fully, fully alive on this planet. And if it's not, like it's worth checking in with yourself. Right. And I hope that like Brio as a name continues to remind you that that's the point of the whole thing. Yes. I actually did. I, I, I sat down. Uh, you're, you're completely right. I sat down and really chose that one like I like did a lot of thinking I thought about it for weeks I think maybe even a month or two really kind of like molded over I was like no this is good this is good you know and so I th that one I, I never really uh, friends with benefits I actually did kind of uh, I second guessed a, a number brilliant. of times <laughs> it's brilliant and there, there's some things where, where, where like you know it it is it, it needs to be exactly that because there's nothing else that means that there's nothing else that holds that same sentiment yeah. that has that meaning for me um it, from a marketing SEO standpoint, it's not fantastic because you look at friends with benefits and there's, you know, uh, a couple hundred or thousand, you know, accounts that are, you know, yep. have one song or some, you know, wacky stuff or whatever. Oh, and so true. Movies made called friends with benefits. You know what I mean? It's all that stuff you got to think about. Scott Brio, there's nothing. Literally, yep. I'm like the first 14 pages on Google. And uh, that's why you see so many bands that are struggling with that same thing. Churches spells their name wrong because yep. of that exact reason. Yeah. Yep. It's a common problem. It's yep. like, it's not just the quality of the name, which FW is brilliant. Thank you. Can't say that enough. But, uh, but it's Bonobo. also, but it's also the marketing quality of like, is it ownable? Right. Like, can people quickly search you? Yeah. And if you're lucky enough that someone might actually reach into their pocket, grab their phone, pull up Google, and type your name into it, mm. can they find you quickly? You're probably not going to get another search. Right. You know, yeah. they might, you're really you lucky get, to get the might, first one. Yeah. You'd be like aces to you get two. You might get a second one. I usually will do a first one if that doesn't work. Like, if, I, if, if you search Bonobo, I actually know this for a fact, you just search bonobo. Of course, you're going to get like pages of, of monkey images. <laughs> you know I mean? Fair. But but if you put bonobo music, that's yes. That's what you have to do. Or bonobo SoundCloud. Or yep. Know, yeah. That's what I. If I were finding you as FWB, yeah, I would use one another. I would search it once. Yeah. It would be like, of course, you can't find someone FWB naturally. Um, and I would add either DJ. I would add music. Yeah. You know, some other audio descriptor. And if that didn't work, I'd give up on you completely. <laughs> <laughs> it was never to be seen again. Forget you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that's, that's a good uh, marketing point, though. I mean, you should, if you're choosing a name or an alias, like, you really should consider that, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, right. You know, it, it's tough because it's kind of a catch-22 because you don't know. You, you have to spend uh, six months, a year, two years um, using it and, and creating content to yeah, really see how it's it. going to how it's going to, you know, fill out. Um, and, you know, something uh, that I learned uh, fairly quickly from throwing show, uh, throwing parties and that sort of thing and, uh, you know, uh, party flyers and, uh, you know, having my own website. Um, uh, all that stuff is, is really important for SEO. Um, yeah. uh, and the people that are just using Facebook or just using, um, you know, Twitter or whatever, a lot of those websites, uh, forms even, will, they, they, they keep their stuff self-contained yeah. because they don't want your stuff leaking out. They don't want any of their stuff leaking out that can be enjoyed from any random browser or whatever, right? So, you know, for instance, like by posting your photos, uh, your club flyers or your DJ photos or your album covers and, you know, properly tagging them in the, the description. Yes. The file name itself. Yes. The metadata, all that stuff. All that stuff is very important because that's what makes it to Google Images, you know. The, this is the 
the layer of creativity and um, determination that's behind any artist that has to get off the ground yeah. where you have to get deep into this, the nuts and bolts of it, of, right. of like, wh where are you, where are you putting these assets? How are you taking them? How are they going to show up in SEO? Right. And I really, uh, I don't know of this, but I wish there was um, sort of a consultancy for um, SEO mm. for artists, for music artists. Yeah. And if, I, I think that would be brilliant. I think there should be, if there isn't already. Yeah. So, I mean, I know that there's there's companies that, you know, I've, I've had friends that have started companies, and you can go to these companies, and you can pay, you know, X, Y, and Z, thousands of dollars, as much as you want, really. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, it, they'll take your money, and they'll they'll use it, and use it well. But um, you can go, and you can get branding. You can yeah. get, you know, uh, you know uh, a website, a, you know, super pro website, and all this stuff, and they will make what what it is you want whatever it is whether it's an app or a you know service or whatever they'll brand it and make it look fucking top notch you know um there should be something like that for music i would love it if they were um very financially accessible yes. i think there's a lot of services like that out there for small businesses i yeah. think there are a lot of them that are built around you know a different revenue model yeah for the aspiring or emerging artist right <laughs> it doesn't have startup dollars yeah there's yeah <laughs> very little resources <laughs> right. so uh making something like that that's accessible yeah um i think would be it's actually something really i'm i'm interested in doing and I, i'm passionate about not just uh about how an artist makes work that's really interesting and noteworthy mm. but the art form of how does that artist get heard and yeah. what happens next? What's the step after the step? Right. Um, after you pour your heart into a project that you're really proud of, that can sit on a shelf, mm -hmm. and it can live in a jump drive, mm -hmm. and it can live in a file system on a hard drive, and yeah. no one will ever get a chance to enjoy it. And the world is full of so much music right now right. that it really feels so daunting to get your voice heard. Um, so helping other artists think of creative ways to mm. navigate that is mm -hmm. something that I'm really passionate about and I'm really excited to learn firsthand and right. if I should be so lucky to figure out a way that somehow works I'd be mm -hmm. so excited to turn around and share that with every other artist and music person I can think of and find and totally, yeah. I have learned so many tips and to it by watching your podcast Oh yeah, so many of the people that you've had on the show have I've dropped so much gold I think you're listening to this right now and this is your first via EM, you should start and just go through the whole catalog because there's a lot of resources for people that have really done a lot in this space. For sure. I mean, even just, even just, you know, uh, the, the, the various stories that, uh, you know, people have told like BB Hayes, you know, his experience, uh, yes. in San Francisco yes. and making those, those, uh, you know, those, um, go girl mixtapes, you know, mix CDs, you know, yeah. and it's like, Dude, like that's not that's not a small deal. Like that's not uh, that's not just some fun story. Like that is, for for him, that was what really got his name out there as a DJ. And if you're an aspiring DJ or musician, right now, like it's easy to look back on things and be like, oh yeah, like well of course that's what he did. But back then felt just like right now does right yeah, now, you know. Right. And so you have to keep that in mind. Like there's something that that you or you know, whoever you are whoever watching, whatever, there's something you can do right now that somebody isn't doing that, you know, you got you, you it, the, the, the most anxiety inducing part is that you just have to think yeah. of it. You have to yes. sit down and figure it out. Yes. And a lot of times that takes a, a good amount of mental turmoil and, and consideration and mulling over and all that. You know what I mean? Um, but, and sometimes it just happens naturally for him. It sounded like that was, and, and I think that that's a very beautiful thing, uh, when it, when it happens and it does happen a lot, you know, for him, that was like, they, they just started messing around and they, you know, uh, were put playing song, you know, putting songs into pro tools and they're like, Oh, well, why don't we just like mix these together? We'll put it on a CD and then handed that out. And people were like, Oh, this is great. Like what the, you know, what I is love it? it. I yeah. enjoy it. I want more. Yeah. Right. And then, Oh, now it's the thing we're going to do, you know? And then they started pressing out like thousands and thousands at a time, you know? And that was, you know, sometimes when you're thinking about those questions about like the, the principle of it, the tactic of it is a time, a point in time, you have yeah. CDs and doing this. But to your point about these bigger questions that you might have to take time with and really go and be intentional about, sometimes I, re I really love to write down the question mm. without the answer. Just don't, I don't know the answer, but I just put it on my calendar. Or I put it yeah. somewhere that I see it all the time. Right. And I like to just 
you know, sit with it, continue to bring it back, continue to, and, and like just sort of put it out there and yeah. hope that like ultimately by articulating the question that you're searching for the answer for that, that might guide you to ideas. Yeah. And some of those ideas, you do have to wait for them, court them, oh, you know, yeah. invite them in. And, yeah. but if you were brave enough to put that, to put the idea down or the, the question down and ask for the ideas to come, I think mm. that they always show up. Yeah. It's maybe At not on your t- right. It maybe not on your yeah. time, but they <laughs> always show up. They yes. always deliver. Yes. Uh, and then the question is like, are you going to be brave enough to follow through and actually put them into action? Right. Yeah. And uh, I've got a number of those swirling around in my head right now because I've finished this these these six tracks, um, and you know when I say that they come out, I'm not going to self release them. So I'm going to put them on on my personal website. Mm-hmm. Um, as uh, a boy named Barbara dot com, and then I'm going to just. Um, make that available to um, the industry and, and hopefully get signed through uh, getting them released on a proper label. So you're going to put them on like a, like a hidden page or a something? Hi- right, with, a hidden with page. With plays, yeah. That's right. That's smart. So that way that um, I can take the body of work and start to search and my, you know, get, the, get the music to a proper label um, and see where it goes from that. And I don't know what will happen, um, but I continue to think of all these ideas around this like step between uh, where you are as an emerging artist with a body of work that you're proud of and ready to share mm. and feels, you know, ready for an audience. And how do you go from that space into the space where you're, you're now releasing that? And so what I should do is come back to this chair a year from now and yeah. check in and yeah. let you know what you're, so this is, this is, we're talking this over the week before the music, uh, you know, is, is starts to be socialized mm-hmm. and I'd love to fast forward a year from now and then bring you back an update. I love this. Um, I'm moving to LA next month. So, Oh, are um, you? Yeah. I didn't even know that. <laughs> I know. Crazy. I wanted to tell you on the hot spice. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's I just amazing. decided to move to LA to like, yeah. to further put myself in a space that might further make coincidences possible. And we're going to plan our dinner dates uh, uh, much further in advance now. <laughs> I'm telling you, um, I, I love an early morning road trip. So I'll, there you go. I could jump yeah. in my car there at yeah. five in the morning and be yeah. up here for and I'm, I'm going to be making many trips to L.A. as well. And I'll have a place to stay. Hey. A crash pad. Sweet. Yeah. So, um, but I, this was the thinking about the swirling ideas around um, any big question you don't know the answer to. It. In my case, it's the question of, like, how do I bridge that gap yeah. between a body of work that I'm proud of and having a, a, a vehicle to share it? Yeah. Um, and so these ideas are coming daily, but the determination and the bravery to actually put them out there because some of them are pretty like wild mm-hmm. um, is, is sometimes <laughs> there's a gap there. And thankfully uh, I've have a number of friends who bring just a, vo- a small voice of sanity into the equation. <laughs> and uh, I have a number of tracks and are more feel good in nature. I'm <laughs> a happy guy and I want happy music and I want yeah. people to be feeling the good vibes when I'm playing it. Yeah. And, if um, if I can be putting something that puts a smile on someone's face, I really like that. Uh, so I thought, here's what I'm going to do. And when when uh, San Francisco hits rush hour traffic, and it's like a Thursday at four or five, you know, really like height of rush hour traffic, mm. when all of 101 um, is just at a dead standstill, uh, I. It's in, for those of you who don't know San Francisco, this highway is, goes through the heart of the city, but it is elevated through bridges, and so it's sort of at eye level with rooftops next door. Mm. And I thought, I'll set up on top of a rooftop. And I will put a stage out there. I'll put, I'm going to literally broadcast my, so on an FM channel so that oh. if you're sitting in the char- car, you could just turn to my dial, and Whoa. I will, and I will like DJ to you, and I will try to put a smile on your face, and we'll film it. We'll put it on YouTube. Wild. It turns out. You can't broadcast because no. there's some some restrictions FCC. there. <laughs> FCC would like a word with you. <laughs> so thank God for some shout out to Melissa Wilkinson. Shout out to mm-hmm. you because she um, she said our goal is to break a boy named Barbara, but yeah. it's also not to break him out of jail. Yes, that's, right. <laughs> let's just make our year one goal to keep you from without being. So the ideas are big, and the, uh, um, that's hilarious. They have to live in a little bit of the realm of possibility. A little bit, yeah. That's funny. I mean, brave. but you know, they, they they can feel crazy, and a lot of times they do. I mean, even this podcast, like, I had the idea for it, and I and I was like, you know, I just did the did the pilot with my 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 buddy, and then I started started, you know, I invited one of my other friends and one of my other friends, and then it's kind of. But I was, at at some points, I was like, well, I'm just gonna like 
I'm really just going to like start inviting like all these random people like, <laughs> to come talk to me. I've never talked to them before. You know what I mean? Like it's very weird, you know? Um, and, but it uh, shockingly like worked, you know? And, yeah. and, and, um, there's, uh, I think that a lot of times like you just have to, you have to jump in to a certain degree, you know, with some of these ideas and, and try them out, you know, they might not work, but just like you know, Gary Vee always says, like like you should be wanting to fail as many That's times right. as possible. Fail, 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 fail. Be failing all the time. You know what I mean? Elizabeth Gil- Gilbert um, is one of my favorite creatives in that she expresses ideas as these disembodied f- entities that sort of swirl around us, mm. and that ideas are looking for someone to inhabit them and bring them into the real world, oh. and that if if that idea comes to you, like this podcast came to you, mm-hmm. and it's and if you hadn't take an action it mm. would leave you and go to someone else who would and Glad so didn't. these in these we always have a relationship with the ideas that are coming around us and i love this principle i think of i think of um so many of the the songs that i have or the mm. ideas that have brought me to this space and i think like that was so special that that idea um, chose me and that i was able to like bring that right. into the real into the world um and i'm glad that when you had the idea for through this long format, this conversational approach to sharing an artist story or getting to know a person beyond their persona, mm-hmm. that you said yes to that idea. I'm yeah. so glad you did. Yeah. I've found so much value in it. I listen to it all the time, and I'm enjoying the chats to like be a part of that. Yeah, well, it's, <clears throat> I, I love that. I, I you know, uh, that, that's what makes all, ma- makes me want to keep doing this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, you know, it's it's funny because I didn't, you know, uh, I. I pretty much actually just copied the format, you know, as yeah. far as like, you know, this is this is what Joe Rogan does. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I'm a huge fan of Joe Rogan's podcast and it's very similar um, in, in a lot of ways, different in a lot of ways mm-hmm. as well. Um, but, uh, but also, you know, I mean, you know, I, what I noticed is a lot of, most of my, all of my favorite uh, podcasts, uh, I'd say most of them, probably 80% of them are this format. Yeah. Long form, you know, Matt Farah uh, does, um, fuck, what's his podcast? Uh, it's car. It's a car podcast. I'm, bl- I'm blanking on it right now. Yeah, but um, you know, he has he has car pe- he has car here. people on. You know, and they just talk <laughs> about car things. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> I should know this. Yeah. <laughs> I used to work for a car company. I oh, should, that's right. I should yeah, yeah, yeah. This. Smoking tire. That's it. <laughs> yeah, smoking tire. I have no idea. Yeah, I've heard yeah. Of that. Okay. It's a good podcast. Um, you know, and there's there's some other ones that kind of break the the norm. Like there's um, uh, you know, a bunch of them that uh, kind of follow the NPR style. You know, uh, like uh, Radio Lab where they mm-hmm. add the effects. And oh, it's more sure. of, it's but, those, but those are more mm-hmm. produced and they're more, mm-hmm. like, I love that. And I love the idea yeah. of that. And I would love to do that. But I also, I know what that would take. And that it takes so much like research and, you know, all this stuff. Hey, Mikey. Hey. Yo, you getting out of here? I'm out of here. Okay. Hi, I'm Mikey. Caleb. <laughs> yeah, I'm all done. Okay. Cool, man. Thanks, dude. I'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, sounds good. Deliveries all day. Deliveries. Okay. I'll be here in the morning. Uh, just tomorrow, but it'll be gone by tomorrow night. Has any cleaning been done in the beans? No. We'll do that. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, but, um, yeah, you know, uh, Oh, you were talking about the podcast formats. podcast formats, radio lab being a little bit more produced. Yes, exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah. And th- there's so much, so much work that they, they put into researching these things and going out and talking to people and, and, and then bringing it all back and organizing it and turning it into a storyline and then adding effects and all this. And like, oh man, that's, I mean, with, with making music, like I, I could not, I could not do both of those. You know, this is, this is perfect for me. Um, but it's like making music. It's like, you know, when you sit down to make um, your, your house tracks, whatever it is, if you're making a future bassy track or a yep. future house or whatever, um, it's got to fit the format to a certain degree, you know, it's gotta be within um, 70% of, yeah. of kind of what the genre is expecting. Yep. Otherwise you're, you're too far out into That's the, right. into the weeds and it doesn't sound like what you, you know, That's right. so it's just, it's a weird delicate line that you, that you, uh, you know, between making your own s- samples and your own, you know, synthesizer sounds and all this stuff, your own vocals, you know, but it's kind of all gotta be p- pointed in the, in the, this one direction. If that's what you want. You know, I didn't really understand your format when I first listened to your podcast and your show. Mm-hmm. And I um, I can remember, well, uh, the, it may have had something to do with the, the first episode I listened to was the one with Ryan. And oh, in the garage? No, um, it oh, was Ryan, Ryan. Ryan Michael Robbins. My, yes, 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 <laughs> yes. yes. So um, it was very loose conversation and yeah. it really wasn't connected. At the time you were chatting with him, yeah. he was telling about his kid's school and he was like, I, oh, I, I, I was like, yeah. wait. And 
he's a good friend, by the way. Like, I, I, I really do enjoy him, but I was like, wait, where's the electronic music part of this storyline? And I, I didn't really understand the beauty of long format conversation. Yeah. And I, I remember, like, early on, um, even when we started getting connected, I kept um, you know, thinking about uh, the, all the different types of formats and structure and the mm -hmm. role of structure and, you know, having a, a strong point of view to the conversation. The conversation is more structured and guided and focused and whatever. And, um, and then I just kept listening to all of your podcasts and watching mm -hmm. them and getting into them. And I think, uh, and that's when I finally got it. I was like, mm -hmm. wow, this is a, this, this is a beautiful thing. You're onto something beautiful because you create with a blank canvas, mm -hmm. you allow a conversation to go where it leads. Yeah. And you, in, in the process, the person watching becomes this sort of third person that's a part of the conversation in someone's living room. And it has yes. this incredible vibe. So I love yeah. what you've created here. I think this has got something so special. And I, and I really do think that the way that you're thinking about this in terms of more than just the artist, when you're talking about people who are adjacent to the entire industry, electronic music as a whole, as a community of it, mm -hmm. um, being established artist, local artist, um, you know, someone like emerging artist, but also the nightclub owners, but also yeah. like other voices, other like people that are a part of this space that are right. so critical to making it happen. Yeah. Their voice should be heard too. And yes. you're, you're creating a space for all of that. And a lot of them, and most of them, uh, I guess until this podcast really, or maybe, you know, interview the uh, interview or something, you know, yeah. that don't, you don't really get to hear anything. And even in, even then it's, it's these choice segments and these bits and, and that, you know, I do run into a little bit of that where people, you know, they get nervous of the idea, you know, yeah. because, um, People are used to, you know, I mean, the way that the culture is right now, especially with the internet and just, you know, you, you say the wrong thing and, and, you know, it can get fucking retweeted and, oh, you, know, sure. say, you know what I mean? And just, um, stuff like that, you know, people are like, oh, I don't want to say the wrong thing and embarrass myself. And mm -hmm. it's like, look, I get it. I completely get it. But at the same, at the same time, I try to remind people like, look, this, all this stuff might as well not be here. That's right. You know, because we're, we're just having a conversation. And as long as we're just having a conversation, you, you don't just fly off the shelf and be like, oh, I, I you know, you say some fucking <laughs> wild shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like I really like to, you know, uh, stick my dick in tamales or something. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, cantaloupes, I don't know. You know, like, <laughs> like you, don't just, you don't just say that in some, you know, uh, random conversation with people, yeah, you know? Right. Um, right. so, so you can always rely on that, you yep. know? Like, um, and, and this is a beautiful thing too, where it's like, it's not like, you know, when you, when you have to work at like, you know, when you're, you're previous, you're nine to five and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, you do have to kind of filter yourself and that I've been in that situation. I've worked nine to fives where you're, you're, your normal self every other day. Yeah. And then you show up to this thing where you can't use the same words that you normally yeah. use. You can't interact with people with the same way. You can't make the same jokes, you know? And, um, that's what most of the people that are worried about this yes. podcast, that that's what they're already doing. Yes. You know? Yeah. When you come on here, and like, you, like this is go. just, it's just, it's anything fly. If anything you goes. got that down, you're going to, this is cake <laughs> right, for you. Exactly. Like, you're right. Great. Right. Exactly. When you described that relationship with nine to five, uh, that actually reminded me of my old, in my background, because I grew up really conservative in the Midwest right. where church is a big part of the, like, the heritage that I grew up in. In, in my tribe, like where I came from, like that was a big part of the deal. Right. Was that this, and it was this, this common sense, this like special space where all these other like things play these like, Oh, you like, you like this, you're like that. And, um, and then I think we translate that same sort of thing in, in the nine to five culture. And we're always sort of trying to navigate what, version of me can I bring to this space? Mm, yeah. Like where can I bring and uh the space you've created here in this space is just like bring you. Right. Whatever you shows up in any room and just plops down on the chair. That's right. the you that we want. Exactly. Even at that moment. Yes. You might be a different you in a year. Tired you. This yeah. is like the happy you whatever. Right. Oh I've had many podcasts where I literally like I was tired. Or oh. I was, I was, you know, <laughs> an emotional wreck or, um, you yeah. know, uh, before, I, before the, the podcast that Lex and I did, yeah. I had done another podcast. Oh. So I had already done a podcast and she was like jet lag. She had just flown from like, from wherever she was into LA no and then right over here and then was literally sleeping back there on one of the, the booths while we were doing the podcast and I like shake her. I'm like, all right. 
we got to go well, on. Let's go. Let's do it. You know, and she like rubs the sleep out of her eyes what? and gave it, you know, gave it a, a, a probably like tw- 20 minutes or something. And then she was, that's what you, that's what you saw, you know? Well, it was one of my favorite, that's one of my favorite podcasts. You yeah. couldn't tell you're to, your total right. pros. Well, so, and that also too is, you know, uh, I mentioned like, um, the, the, the episodes where I've been like, you know, a lot of shit going on, emotional wreck or whatever, like there's something too when you sit down here and you lock into a conversation, you have the headphones on, mm-hmm. you have the mic, you can hear your own voice. It, you get locked in and yeah. all that other stuff. Like I, what I know, cause I was nervous. I was like, I was like, I was an emotional wreck and I was like, Oh, this is going to be a terrible podcast. And yeah. well, you know, it's going to, I'm going to look like a fool. And then I got on and I, and I, and I got locked into this conversation and I realized that, Oh no, this is like my safe space. Yeah. This is where everything else melts away. Yeah. And almost more than even making music, like literally, or even playing games. Playing games, video games was always my, you know, if I'm in a uh, bad place or I'm stressed out or just really too tired to do anything, think of anything, I play video games. Mm -hmm. This is even more than that, you know, because this you just get locked in. And there's also, too, because there's somebody else on the other side of these headphones and microphone and you're locked in, you know what I mean? And so you have... A little bit of a responsibility to, you know, <laughs> totally. to, to keep the conversation going. You know? I think that's a, just an affirmation of what you're up to with this with this podcast and the, where you've landed on it. But um, it actually, when you, when you said even more than making music, mm. that reminded me that for me, when in my DAW, that that isn't, um, and maybe it is for others, but that's not, that doesn't feel like home to me in the sense, you know, mm-hmm. I, I spent a lot of time in it yeah. and I know it, it's, wor- it, it's work. It's, it's like, work. it's creative expression and creative expression is, is, is beautiful and difficult and challenging. And right. like the, it's, um, it, it isn't like, you know, this isn't a place where I just, I don't go to my daughter to get lost and feel happy vibes. Right. Um, Cause there's frustration there. Oh yeah. It's self, <laughs> it's laced with self doubt and insecurity and Pity. delight <laughs> and surprise. Yeah. And then you're like, yes. what did that just, right. wow. Right. Like, and it's all in this big, and I love it and maybe I'm addicted to it at yeah. this point. It's what I want to spend the rest of my life doing. Me too. So uh, I, I think uh, it's a, such a special place. But um, I recently, f- uh, oh, I don't know what it's called. It's called Habit Something. There's an app that mm-hmm. tracks for habits. And uh, it's, so it's just a little, it's really simple and there's these little tiles on this app and a friend of mine had suggested like, why don't you think about those spaces that actually are that like get lost in home base feeling, mm. um, whatever makes you just the best version of you and make little tiles for them and just think about every day. Like, how can I be doing it? And for, for me, music has always been that home base for me. Well, it may, making it is a different a space in my life and plays a different role. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's something I'm, I love and enjoy. Uh, but putting on uh, a song that you've got like a special connection to, that, yeah. it goes, that connection goes deep. Yeah. And that that evokes a spirit of like joy or great memory. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, it's like, uh, connected to a live show that you saw once and you, you mentally are right back in that room yeah. watching that DJ f- experiencing those lights. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, it's, that's my number one tile on the whole thing. And I try to make a habit of every day, uh, n- not being m- focused solely on the art of, of creating to music in, and adding to the collection of rich nature of music that we have, but also just remaining to I- immerse myself in it mm. and be fed by it, but then also give to it. Yeah. Yeah. If you had to think of those musical moments, those p- tracks that like have like that special sauce all over it, does mm-hmm. any, do any come to mind immediately for you? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I, it's funny because I normally try to, I, I try to avoid those questions from my side because I found that when I ask my guests that, they freeze up. But I actually have some. Are you experiencing that no, right no, now? No, 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 no. I'm no, wondering. No, no, like, no, no, no. No, I, I'm uh, zen enough in this moment having done <laughs> 40, 40 episodes. <laughs> like, and your favorite song is. Right, yeah. <laughs> We're now going to begin 20 questions with Scott. I've prepared them. We're like, we get my notes. Um, a lot of, um, oddly enough, a lot of Skrillex's early stuff. Oh, even before, like, uh, 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 what is it, Mon- Nice Sprites and Monsters oh. and Nice Sprites mm-hmm. or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of that stuff uh, really, like, uh, I don't know, I don't know what, it was a very transcendental, uh, transitionary time in my life, mm. and I was listening to a lot of that stuff, and it was he was doing a lot of really, really weird, different things, but they were also very melodic, and there were, he had vocals, and he had, it was just very 
powerful, you know, mm-hmm. um, much like his music is still, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but they, he had, you could hear this kind of innocence and uh, ex- exploration in it, you know. Um, and, and that stuff I really, um, I really connected with. And it, it really, like, even still when I put that stuff on, like, it still gives me chills, you know. Is it connected um, to specific memories you have with that music or a time in your life? Or is it just more connected to the music itself? It's a little bit of both. I yeah. mean, uh, I, I'd say that stuff almost even more of a time because I was, I was, uh, I was, uh, I was actually driving uh, Lyft and Uber. And then also I was working at my nine to five. Um, but I would like, I'd get off work or I'd get off uh, driving and I would actually go to the gym at like 2 a.m. Oh, wow. Yeah, from like 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. or 24 whatever. 24-hour? Yes, 24-hour 24 fitness. fitness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's got to be. But it would be like the only person there except yeah. for the weird you know, Russian dude that's like, I know why I'm here, but why are you here? <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and he's just way too jacked. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that, that's what was playing. And, and that's what I love so much about music. And I, I started with art. Started, you know, um, as a kid making, you know, traditional art. And this is something I would like to go back to uh, eventually once I've kind of established myself even more in, in where I want to be with music. Um, but uh, I realized that, that uh, art didn't give me, like, chills. Mm-hmm. It didn't give me that same, you hear a song and you, like, can, you, you get, like, you remember smells, you know what I mean? You remember emotions. You have these big welling, like something, you know, make you cry, you know? I mean, it's just so powerful. And art is also very powerful, very powerful, especially, you know, uh, you know, going to something like Burning Man when you see these fucking magnificent pieces that are set up in the middle of the desert. There's no reason for that to be there mm. other than art itself yeah. and, and for the experience, you know? Um, but, uh, but music, you know, it really just, t- you know, touched something on a much deeper level and, and to the point of chills mm-hmm. and um, that sort of thing. Um, a lot of Tycho's music, pretty much everything Tycho's ever made, you know. Um, Man's a genius. It's just, yeah. It's out of, so when I was driving Lyft and Uber, you know, uh, two, oh, two, th- two, three in the morning, four in the morning in San Francisco. Yeah, and I'm, I'm driving. I mean, he, he recorded a, a good bulk of his stuff, his earlier stuff in the sunset where mm-hmm. I live now, where I was driving. And I would be driving at like, you know, three in the morning having just dropped someone off, maybe they're, I, I didn't get a ping or anything, so I'm just kind of cruising around or whatever, and there's that heavy sunset fog, yeah. and there's just quiet out there, and I'm, I have like a good sound system, and I'm driving my car, and I, you know, I love my car, and so I was, I was, it was, it was like a, it was an okay place, you know, a lot of people would be bored, but it's but also me, like connected to the source of that music, that music yeah. was born out of that heavy fog in exactly. that neighborhood, in that space, and maybe yes. even around that same time of the night, who knows, you I might have picture, driven by his house, right, you can picture, yeah, studio. Uh, like, you know, Someone, oftentimes inspiration strikes when you're doing this stuff at all different times. Exactly. You can imagine a moment where he was there at three in the morning or four in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Can you have him on the show so we can find out? I, he's on the bucket list. Okay. Right. <laughs> and he actually lives, uh, I think, right over uh, by the park. I don't know. I remember, uh, uh, I think he, one of his Instagram stories is like, oh, I think I recognize that. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, he's, he's definitely on the, on, the, on the list of people to have. Uh, what about you? What's uh, any, anything that you can think oh, of that? It's, Armin Van Buren. Oh shit! Yeah, all the way. And I've I've got um, a lot of respect for him as an artist and a producer, uh, but one of the things that I most admire about him, for me anyway, is the way that he's able to tap into an emotional place and evoke emotion. Mm. And I think, uh, like someone that's writing a film score, uh, can do in a movie, he can do through a number of different. Movies. And I've got a lot of positive things to say about everyone who knows me knows that I've a, a giant admirer of his craft and he's one of the big inspirations that has uh, inspired me to get into the field of and the playground of electronic music yeah. uh, and when I started actually I I thought I would be a trance artist because I was so inspired by him mm. and I because of a state of trance and his universe mm. of music uh, at the time I was consuming a lot of trance music and I find it to be so emotional and I love it and I think it you know takes me to a really special place so I, I thought this is I'll start kind of in this space. You got to pick somewhere. Yeah, I'll start there. Uh, and I, I played a, a long set of trance out at a nightclub here in SF, and 
I, I just noticed that even inside of it while I was playing it, I was really enjoying it, but it wasn't making me like light up. Mm. Like it wasn't just like bringing me to life inside. It wasn't tapping into that, that brio, if you will, mm. to like go back to like <laughs> yes. that source energy. Totally. Uh, and so that actually, um, made me go on a quest and a different quest to say like, you know, when you, whenever you're, you're producing, the problem is like, if you're a fan of electronic music, you want to, at least I think I want to produce it all. I want, I want to do uh, some trance. I want to do some future. I want to do some great bass stuff. I want to do some classic house. I want to do some disco. I want to, I mean, the list is endless because mm. I, I love like tech house and wouldn't it be great to do a, just a monster techno track, right? Like, but, um, as conventional wisdom would, would encourage us. You got to start, pick, start somewhere and you got to pick a lane and yeah. you got to go from someplace. Yeah. Uh, and so it just started to pull together a different body of work and, and start to vision differently of like, what would bring me alive on the inside? What would light mm. up that pre and what would find that yeah. joy? Um, and so I found that in a, a lower BPM in, in staying more in the house world and flavoring that with, you know, very vocal driven music, um, in in things that are like deeply rooted in house and and flavoring with different genres so out of the six tracks that i have i try to flavor each one into different space so mm. they all live in the same with the same core ingredients but have different like pizza they have different mm. toppings yeah uh, and great metaphor the uh, yeah. and and many of them have some seasoning of Armin van Buren ah. sprinkled in there somewhere <laughs> just because yeah. I can't help it. Yeah. I always tell people my, I think m that probably that my biggest influence in my overall sound is oddly enough, Jay Dilla. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm surprised by that. Yeah. Um, just because, you know, uh, I, his production style, that's what he's so famous for, yeah. you know, is the, the organicness and the, the quirkiness, but it works. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, and that I was so inspired by that when I when I um, and, and I started making hip hop. You know that was where I started. Was, oh, of course. Well, that makes a lot of sense yeah, in that case. Yeah. Um, and that's something that just never left me. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, like, kind of the, the influence from uh, Armin mm -hmm. van Buren uh, was the same for you. And it's just oh. something about the tonality and the, the like, which is why I always am striving. And again, I say this all the time, but I'm still always striving for organicness and and texture and and you know character and j trying to kind of get you know because he he pretty much used i mean all of his stuff ended up in a daw you know he would take it to the studio and end Completely. up it would end up in pro tools yep. but he had this he you know i remember reading an article and you know he always he was he was using a either a um you know sp1200 or his mpc4000 or a 3000 or a 2000xl or a 60 or uh, mpc60 or he was using uh, even sometimes you know he would use uh the uh, what are the little uh, fucking blanking on the 303 the MC 303 I or whatever I love when you speak gear <laughs> <laughs> okay, just, uh, yes I'm obsessed <laughs> it's a different language yeah. <laughs> right can we get subtitles on the screen yeah, can well, you translate well, that into English mm -hmm. for well, all little of the image <laughs> pop ups yeah <laughs> Okay, but as you were saying, yeah, yeah, I didn't mean to derail. No, I just, yeah, I just yeah, love what you yeah. do, <laughs> and this happens all the time when we're talking on, right. on any different topic. Right? Like, yeah. you just I didn't realize how I thought everybody was this obsessed with gear. Everyone spoke, and gear. I started talking. I started, well, actually once I started doing this podcast, I started like rattling off these these bits of gear that you know that have been on on the, the front of my brain and that I've been reading about and obsessing over, and then people are like, I oh, know, I, I don't know, and I'm like, oh, I. It's just, that's a me thing, I guess. Like, <laughs> Is it a little bit like when I just put you on the spot about an artist? Exactly. Like, you yeah, get yeah. the same sort of look. <laughs> yeah, you get yeah. the same sort of bewilderment. Exactly right. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> am I supposed to know what a 303 is? Right. I don't know. <laughs> but I know it's not just because I also am on like, like uh, synthesizer freaks. Like oh, it's yeah. on the the, yeah. the like the Facebook group. Yeah. And you know I, I go on Gear Sluts a lot, and then like on Reddit, and so you know it's just uh, I know it's 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 kind of a smaller niche of people that are are you know uh, hardware uh, enthusiasts. Yeah, hardware enthusiasts. You know, um, I love software. Don't get me wrong, but um, there's just something. I think it's probably because I started with a, a, a like a hardware. Uh, DAW yeah. essentially, you know, a keyboard workstation. But anyway, to get back to you know, um, uh, uh, using uh, like samplers and stuff. Oh yes, Jay Dilla. Yeah, yeah Jay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so he would take his, he would make these beats and he would bring them into the studio and he would tell the engineer he'd like, no, nah, that's you know, you gotta you gotta nudge that back by you know, a few milliseconds. And yeah, I'm sure the the guy in his head's like, are you kidding me? Like this guy is such so neurotic, you know. But then when you listen to it, like the timing, he was so particular about 
the little bits of timing. And even that, I still do that uh, to this day, like with that track that I played after, mm-hmm. you know, after we uh, listened to all your stuff, you know, that the, the bass line in that, I went back and forth for probably, two, and I try not to do this. I try not to like, like nuance too much and mm-hmm. like, like obsess over these things. I have the, the 80% rule that I try mm-hmm. to uh, stick by that's, that Steve Duda and Dead Mouse um, talked about, but, um, there's that timing function in Ableton yeah. where you can, you know, nudge things back and yeah. forth. And, you know, sometimes like if, if the bass line just isn't grooving with the drums, you just, you just gotta, you gotta test it out. Uh, minus five, uh, plus five, yes. minus eight. Yes. You know, where is it, where is it sitting where it really just feels right? And so, you know, uh, so that uh, also with the, you know, making my, my DAW stuff sound more like hardware or less like a computer, I guess, you know? I actually, when you say that now, I'm thinking about um, the some. These are loose parallels, mm. but between you know hip hop and like you know coming out of a world is based on percussion and mm. like drums and beat packages. Like you pull that into your work, and the work that's coming out of your ply inspiration is really mm. deeply enriched in that principle. I mean, yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't have sound characteristics of the same, but the principles are there. And, yeah, uh, that is, I think, what makes them so damn danceable <laughs> it's like wow why am i i can't right. stop what, i mean what that what, turn right. this up yeah. i don't know what it is that's that's how it is that's how it, you just it, dropped your wallet by the way uh that's just leave a game it there changer. <laughs> yeah. can you imagine if you hadn't seen because it's all bl- yeah. everything's black here everything's so is my wallet right. i wouldn't yeah I, that would have been an alarming moment yeah. <laughs> you get home shit wait a second right <laughs> I'm a forgetful person. <laughs> I leave stuff everywhere, so I'm not exactly surprised that that happened. I can see why people put those chains on and they just... Yeah, the chain It's not wallets. the aesthetic. I mean, just strap no. it to me. Yeah, like, I'm right. going to lose that shit, so right. just strap it right. on. Right, right. <laughs> Wait. <So I'm> like, <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Don't even say it. Don't even say it. My mom wiped my watch. Right, yeah. <sighs> You Talking always, about his wallet, chain said, wallets. You already said like dick and tamale or something. Yeah, like I that. did, like, yes. I yeah. can't send this to my mom now. Sorry, Gail. Ruined already. Dang, dang it. Sorry, mom Gail. and Barbara. Gail and Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> Gail and Barbara, both of you. Both of you. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> But yeah, you know, uh, I think that's a, a big part of where my obsession comes. And I, I don't know if you've watched it, but I just um, just uploaded the j- uh, episode with Jeff Ferguson. I just got an email about that. Yes, yeah. So I, I actually drove all the way to his house in Fresno. Oh. And he has a fucking studio with like all this gear. Oh yeah, the picture was in the yeah. the little. There were keyboards everywhere. It's literally gear like, everywhere. It's like it's like a guitar center. I mean, he it's works a, a guitar <laughs> center, which is hilarious. Um, and well, as awesome. you should, yeah, yes. get a discount He's on a perfect that. person I mean, for need, it. Well, yeah. yes, yeah, and he needs it for his addiction. Yes, he, yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah. Well, I think that's also to I me. Mean, he said he found a lot of on Craigslist, but I wouldn't be surprised if some of that came in a guitar center. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one? No, oh. that's not worth anything. You don't want that. You yeah, know? That's, <laughs> right. that's right. That's yeah. right. But here's my number. Right. Yeah. Call me later. Oh. Um, but yeah, I mean, he has so many just amazing uh, vintage keyboards and that sort of thing. And um, you know, I really, I, I really, truly believe a lot of times. Um, and I was talking to him about this too. Is like so many of these these things, uh, these these boxes, uh, just they have the character yeah. of what it is. You know, like like if you're trying to make like a, a like a tech house track or like a dirty bird type track or whatever you kind of have to choose, you know, the right samples. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, a lot of those, like, are just, a lot of those songs are just straight up out of the, the, uh, the, the you know, the, the 606 or the mm-hmm. 707 or 909 or whatever. And, um, you know, sure, you can use, like, sample packs and that sort of thing, um, which is which is awesome. I, I also, too, I'm, like, obsessed with being able to, like, just, just, just start, you know, moving things and that it's, sort of it's thing. It's tactile. Tactile. Yeah, I'm very you can tactile. get in there. You're yes. like, yes, put yeah. your hands on it. You right. get around it, yeah. Yeah. Um, and they just have that, they have that character, like my sampler I was telling you about, you, know, you, you could hear it. It's like, it has this sound of like nineties house, like kind of built into it, you know? That was actually probably the clearest, um, example mm-hmm. I've heard of that, that crunch. We talked about characteristics of yeah. samplers. Like, the example you just played for me, I can mm-hmm. really distinctly hear the characteristic and yeah. it wasn't like any sampler I've seen and, and just off the shelf in my diary right. come across on splice or something. It, yeah. it, it was it totally different. It had yeah. a really distinct characteristic that yeah. truly enhanced the vibe of your Playa inspiration track. Yeah. Are you still calling them Playa X numbers? Like, are you, are you naming these now? Uh, yeah, that was number four. See, okay. Yeah. Okay. We're still in the like. Yeah. They live like this like coded life. Yes. Playa 
X, Y, Z, four, five, six. Right, yeah. right. It's they, kind of fun though because they like they don't, names, they don't, yeah. they don't need names yet. No. You know what I mean? They don't. No. And then, and then, you know, I have this ever growing list of, of, of song names in my phone um, that I, I pull from when I, you know, go to put an album together. And I kind of listen to the song and I, I scroll through the, the list of names. Oh, to see if something well, like, sparks for you. Yeah, like what, what like fits? If something jumps off the page, if you're scrolling and you're right. like, ah, oh, that's it. Yes. That's this song. Yes. And some, sometimes the, the lyrics dictate the name of the song or whatever. But for this stuff, there's, there's specifically no lyrics. Yeah. You know? Um, and so, you and know. And then song names are just arbitrary anyway. Exactly. It's like, right. why is it called New Moon? Well, I just put that on. Yes. Like, I mean, you just, it, all of my songs, um, I, all of my songs have some level of vocal. Oh, yeah. Uh, but they were all named mm. early on in the process. Yeah. And. Every last one of them, their na- their name has changed uh, from yeah. like where I started <laughs> to where they like where it is in the least. Right. Uh, and so there's a. In fact, one of them that has now changed in slight variations three or four times, mm-hmm. and uh, it it just changed again. I just was texting with the vocalist today because I was like, oh, I, t- I changed it again, but this is the last time. <laughs> I promise, <laughs> this is it. And it's so lyrically simple. I love this this track idea. This guy's so beautiful because it's like. Um, this is, uh, it's a little bit born out of my own life, mm. but it's born out of this, this notion of like, oh, I, it, the, the lyrics are this, it says, oh, I know I shouldn't. Yes, I know I shouldn't. Oh, I know I shouldn't, but I did. <laughs> and that's the big drop of like, oh, yes, I did. Yes, yes, I did. Yeah. And then it's like this notion of like celebration of like celebrating the fact that I did it. Oh, I did it. Yeah. And yeah. whatever that is for whatever individual, whatever that place that life has taught you to stay inside the lines, that life has taught you how to be, mm-hmm. life has told you where you should be at play or the expectations we have for you, mm-hmm. that this is song is a celebration of those who choose to step outside that nice. and who sort of recognize there's the line, yeah. there's the space. And I'm going to take one big, bold step to the other side of that. Yeah. Uh, and those places are really scary. And I, and I picture this song, and I hope it happens one day, um, that someone who, you know, may be feeling um, like they need to step out of a job that's not the right fit. Maybe mm. it's step out of a relationship that's not the right place for them. Right. Maybe they need to make a move to a city that's scary and that they don't know. And they know that there's a number of people that say, well, be their family lives close to them and so they should stay. That their income is right so they should keep that job. Mm-hmm. That that person rev- provides a lot of stability and they've always been nice and they've always been there for them so they should stay. Whatever that circumstance is, that there's a certain moment where they make the leap. And the next day, uh, that they find in the, in the free fall of emotion, that they find my track and that they celebrate the fact that they did it. At the end of the day, yeah. they knew they shouldn't. Yeah. There's a lot of reasons why they knew they shouldn't, but they had to, and so they did it. Yeah. And this is a celebration of that. So that I love that. Tracks changed names like yeah. a lot of times. <laughs> oh. What's that one called? Now it's called just, I did it. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it simple. <laughs> keep it simple, right, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. Oh. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> so appropriate. Oh. <laughs> so, My, oh, go ahead. I was gonna. I was I'm sitting here looking at your your uh, your shoe, your necklace. Oh yeah. I wanted to ask you about that. Like, where did the origin of yeah, the gold shoes. shoes come by? Because I love. I don't know if you can. You see got you, you pretty much exclusively wear gold shoes. Always. And always. Yeah. It's it's awesome. And this is a. You know, if you can't see it, this is a um, a gold Nike, um, it's, and. One of the high tops from the '80s, and it's great. It's painted gold, but I've wear it so much that the, paint paint is, <laughs> the paint's <laughs> worn off. Actually, uh, and so it's kind of actually cool. It does look like an old sneaker because right, it's yeah. all beat up, yeah, like yeah. just like a sneaker should be. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this is a, a a really special thing. My my EP is called Gold Shoes, and one of the first tracks on it is Gold Shoes, and in the track is a sample from my grandma. My 88 year old grandma is in this track and she's telling us as we start the track and the intro builds, her voice comes on and she talks about how I would always wear her gold shoes. Mm -hmm. And when I was a little boy, I would run into my grandma's house and I'm, I'm talking like six or seven years old and I would go find the closet and I would take out my, her awesome pair of, metallic gold high heel shoes <laughs> they were wedges <laughs> they weren't just gold shoes they were wedges so these these are my favorite shoes of all and i would wear them all over the house and i would 
tearing up the music and I'd actually pretend that I was hyping up a crowd wearing these ridiculous shoes and I would go into the kitchen and grab a turkey baster and pretend it was the microphone. Wow. And I would like hype up this and I saw thousands of people in front. Dude. Just like so many people and I was um, playing music off her old stereo system or a record or whatever I could get to play uh, and then there was a a day um, as you know you go on and keep a kid keeps doing it and I think my parents sort of laughed it off of like, oh, you know, here are boys wearing girl shoes and like that's cute for a while, but then it doesn't get, it's not cute anymore because, mm. you know, like you get old and it's not cute. Mm. Um, and so there's a day that my parents sent me down and we're in the kitchen of my home where I grew up in. And my mom's sitting across me and my dad is sort of standing behind her and kind of comforting her and he's got his hand on her shoulder. And my mom um, explains to me that I'm a normal boy and normal boys don't wear girl shoes and uh, that there's something called gay and mm -hmm. that I'm not that. And, you know, this is the 80s, and so my parents, um, in the conservative world that they lived in, they, they were, um, it's a different time, different space. They've come a long way. But mm -hmm. um, at that moment, she said, you know, like, they don't, we wouldn't want anyone to think that you're, that you're gay because mm -hmm. you're a normal boy, and mm -hmm. we know you're a normal boy, and we don't want anyone to think that you're not a normal boy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the truth is that I'm you know, a proud out gay man, mm -hmm. and... Uh, that is something that I've fully reconciled, but at that moment of my life, that that was a really pivotal moment. I put away those gold shoes, I never touched them again, and I realized that there's something called normal and I'm not it. Yeah. And that uh, I need to figure out how to be normal. And I spent uh, all of my time and energy trying to figure out how to be a normal boy, the normal boy that they wanted me to, so much so that I went on and I crafted the normal life. And I um, ultimately went on and got married. I got a house. Um, dog, fenced in yard, and a great career. Um, and at some point, I realized that I was living someone else's life. And it was at that moment that um, I decided to come out mm -hmm. and to make big changes in my life. And uh, it was a really difficult space to be. And my family uh, has come a, come a long way, but they didn't get it at first. Yeah. And it was a big change. So I, I certainly have a lot of space for that. Uh, but the one champion that was always by my side, always rooting for me, always encouraging me to step out and be authentic and live in that space, no matter how difficult those consequences might be, was my grandma, was my grandma Barbara, and this grandma from those gold shoes. Yeah. Um, and so as I just started to peel back all these layers and get back to that return of it, I felt you know, like music has always been in me. I've always wanted to be in front of and mm. felt destined to be in front of people sharing music as that gift and what better way to remind myself of that space than to do it all in metallic gold shoes mm -hmm. and to pay tribute to the woman who has been championing me from the beginning, from before I even knew what inspiration was, has always seen that in me and has championed that. And so I decided I'm going to call myself a boy named Barbara and wear metallic gold shoes everywhere I go. I love that. I love that. It's, I mean, <clears throat> I think uh, most people could only hope to have so much uh, meaning and relevance behind their behind their 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 branding and their their name and and i, I love too that the image of you wearing the gold shoes dancing around the living room with the turkey baster <laughs> like like if that's not a boy named barbara i don't know what is you like you, you would self-actualize yeah, it before yeah. it even happened you know what i mean like it just feels so right. And yeah. the if we could go back in time and you could just like <laughs> eavesdrop on that room and see that like boy in that yeah. space, see me in that younger the younger me, <laughs> you would just laugh so hard because you'd be like, that is that's every bit the Caleb that we see now that's right. just losing. I uh I I love to especially when I'm when I'm with people dancing out in the space or behind the decks, I am not like there's there's sort of something that I I say it's a crime. I exaggerate it. It's not a crime, but I, I call it a crime. Mm -hmm. It's the crime of cool. And mm -hmm. um, I think DJs and producers are plagued with this crime mm -hmm. and that we have gotten to the space where people are so um, worried about uh, whether it's portraying an image or whether they've just been doing it so long and it's all mundane or it's all the same thing. But um, uh, there's a lot of head bobbing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of head bobbing. Mm -hmm. That's about it. Yep. That's about it. Yep. So people are just kind of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's not me. <laughs> that is not me. I am the guy that is just like all out with the lyrics. Yeah. That is smiling big. That is loving every beat, oh, every drop. It's infectious. And when some, someone puts a big low bass swell, 
like a playa baseball. Oh my god, I go <laughs> nuts for it. So that like um, that that kind of crazy in high, in you know in wedge shoes, uh, yeah. little kid is alive and well in me now, and, and more so than ever. And when I decided um, to really take on a boy named Barbara as my moniker. I'm, I put on a big show last year, and uh, it was my first A Boy Named Barbara show. I invited all my friends. I had a ton of people come out and like celebrate, and we had a great time. Yeah. A wonderful time. I decide, to, and I'm going to take this very literally. And Scott, I literally did the whole, shoe in a, or the, uh, the whole show in high heel shoes. Yes. <laughs> Worst decision ever of my life. I had never, um, I never put them on. I didn't know. What they, so until, like, you know, I, I didn't wear high heel shoes since that day, since I put them away that day. And I yeah. thought, okay, this is a moment. I'm bringing them back. How hard can it be? It yeah. can be hard. It can be terrible. It's yeah. terrible. <laughs> and props to you. If you are a person of any genre, gender that yeah. wears high heels, you have mad respect on my part. Uh, I can't do it. I don't think I can cut it. Yeah. <laughs> it was, um, it, it was so challenging. And so I was in these, oh, and they were like giant heels. And these, well, this is the same ones, these giant big boots. No, uh, they were, Far more exaggerated. Ah. The, the originals were much more sensible than these, and it was the the, the, uh, the, the 40s, 50s versions. Yes, were the originals. This, yeah, was, yeah. Ah, this was ah, <laughs> something else. And I'm just glad yeah. I didn't fall off of them because that was right. a true risk. Because yeah. I put them on right before I like jumped up and started doing the set. And I think there was a bet going among all my friends that were there for that party. Right. And they were like, I think they were taking bets truly on the spot of how, when, how or when I would fall over and right. fall off the stage. Dude, I always I give it up to anybody that's w willing to you know, put heels like that on oh, I know. Uh, platforms, I know. anything. I mean, it's just... Yeah. Do you know there's a running race where women actually do this, mostly women, and be, I think it's open to genders beyond that, but mm -hmm. traditionally women. Um, they actually race in high heels for, it's, I think it's... A 5K, I think it's a full three miles oh, that they do it in heels. It might be less than that. Doesn't sound but safe. <laughs> you should see the speed that some of these people do. I mean, it's I've been a runner my whole life. I was yeah. shocked. Yeah. I was like, I can't run that right. fast in tennis shoes. Dude, I saw I saw a woman running downhill to catch an, a Lyft or Uber or taxi or whatever it was in San Francisco wearing like like five inch heels. And I was like, what? The, like, it's impressive. It's like, that could be, you could, you could join the circus with that. <laughs> <laughs> it is superhuman. It is, it, yes. It is right. superhuman. Yeah. Meanwhile, on the corner, there was an elephant uh, uh, walking around on a ball. And uh, <laughs> people throwing fire. And then this woman running down hills <laughs> and in you, her heels. And that was probably the most marvelous of all it those was, things. It was, yes. Yeah. Everyone yeah. turned their attention to her right, because yeah. that was so remarkable. <laughs> so then, um, this might be my new goal, is somehow to see you in heels. Would you ever? Ah, um, yeah. Okay, yeah, good. We'll yeah. see what that is. I've like. already, I've already tried them. I've, and I've tried. Um, what's your take? What's your verdict? It's really tough to find ones that will fit. I mean, I have size eleven feet, um, mm. so it's a big woman. Challenge, but not impossible. Right, right, not impossible. And here in the Castro, we actually have a lot of options. For yes, us. right, right. Well, I would imagine there's probably stores that make. You know, there for, are. for uh, yeah, you know. we have a lot of drag queens, a lot of people that yeah. you know, like, are looking for um, a larger size. Heel. Oh, yeah. So we've got you covered. Sweet. Come to the Castro. Yeah. Next party you have, I will wear them with you. I've, I've since decided for all, all future, well, that's true. I shouldn't make it so global. For the foreseeable future, yeah. no more heels. The heels okay. are retired. Right. Well, We're in, definitely in high top kicks from, yeah. for now. But they're I like it. Um, absurd in every level. So they're <laughs> like full on glittery. And uh, you know, I wear, I'm always in gold shoes. And yeah. there's an, uh, I was in Bart yesterday. And I was in some glittery, sparkly, metallic, high heeled, high heel or not high heeled, um, high tops. Yeah, high tops. And I actually had a mom and her young daughter sprinting behind me through Bart, trying to catch up with me to figure out where I got the shoes. <laughs> I thought I was going to get mugged. I was so she came running up. You know they didn't want to lose sight of me and let me get on that train without they, they knowing what the brand where they could find them. Right. I took that as quite a compliment. Oh, well, she shouldn't have yelled freeze, sucker! <laughs> <laughs> the three off completely. You know? <laughs> uh, you know, I think um, uh, if I were to wear heels, yeah. Uh, I, you know, randomly browsing the internet, Instagram, whatever. I don't remember where I saw them, but um, I decided I like the, the heels that look like Converse All Stars. Have you oh, seen those? Oh, yeah. They're sick. That's a brilliant idea. They're Whoever sick. thought of that, that was a good idea. Yeah. And I remember, I think I, I, think I asked uh, one of my friends that was a girl at one point, I was like, 
was like, you know, I thought I think these are really cool. I might have been, I might have asked a girlfriend at one point, like, I think these are really cool. Like, you should we should get you some of these, and you can. And then she was like, ah. like 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 they were like trashy. Oh, and I was like, oh, well, yeah, I guess oh, so. Don't let me dress you. Yeah, like, you're, like, <laughs> your fashion radar is off. <laughs> yes, exactly right. You know, um, I I've noticed those too, and they're so subtle. Mm. They can be subtle because mm-hmm. if you look at a you glance at a distance, it kind of looks like a sneaker, especially yeah. if you got if you have pants on, like long pants. Yeah. And I've, I'm an average height dude mm-hmm. who's always aspired to be a tall dude, and thought for a minute, well, could I, could that be my secret to height? Uh. Like, could I, like, secretly wear those right. and just be suddenly tall? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I then go back to the threat of falling over, yes. uh, and which I have said it's not a good strategy. Mini stilts. That's what they, that's what they should be called. Decided, yeah. <laughs> ah, better safe. Better safe on the ground where ah, I belong. You've chosen the mini stilts for but tonight. No, ah. he, here's what I'm going to do for the gold shoes thing. I'm really excited about this. Um, as, as I start to like book shows and play out this, this project, mm. Um, in honor of the whole story of the gold shoes and what they represent because it's a symbol. Mm. Gold shoes are just a, a representation of from being true to the younger you, whatever that looks like to you. Yeah. And following your authentic self in whatever way that that means to you. Um, it, you know, it certainly doesn't have to be the specifics of my story, but it's just understanding that like, well, you know, we're here like experiencing this life and have such a beautiful invitation uh, that as we're experiencing it all to really reconnect with that, of, like be who you are before the world taught you who you should be. Um, and so as the show ends and people are funneling out of the club, we were going to have street teams there ready to spray paint people's shoes. Cool. On the spot. Oh. You can get gold shoes. I love that. And you can walk away and wake up in the morning. You can wake up when you sober up in the morning and feel like, <laughs> what happened to my favorite sneaks? <laughs> and why are they metallic gold? Well, that'll be, that'll be the barber show to thank. That A little token to walk away. Brilliant. We're going to spray paint shoes. Yeah. I mean, and by we, I mean that's going to be your job. Oh, yeah. yeah on Team Barbara. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have Scott outside the club <laughs> spray painting shoes I actually, with I do, a, do a pretty good paint job. You're hired. Sweet. You're hired. Easiest job interview of all time. Imagine, like, Hold still, sweetheart. Hold still. <laughs> I'm trying to get... Come on. You don't even have to take them off. No, you don't. Like, literally, <laughs> we'll get your socks Gold too, ankles, but. too. <laughs> <laughs> It'll basically be a can of gold paint. Right. You just step in it. Yeah, yeah. Pull your foot out. All right, next. Next. <laughs> no, I think it's it's really cool though because it's it's um, it kind it'll go kind of viral. You know what I mean? People are like, where did you get those like gold shoes? Like, who? What? At what, what point did happened? you paint your yeah. shoes gold? Yeah, you know? Yeah. And they'll be like, oh well, I was at this party and a boy named Barbara and. You know, that, at the end of the show, they just pay, painted my shoes. <laughs> yeah. painted my sh- there's a lot of people really stoked on gold shoes everywhere. Right. Next thing you know, I walk home and I've got gold shoes on too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, one of these days. One I of these it. days. Rooftop raves and gold shoes. Yes. And yes. <laughs> hopefully permits for those rooftop right. raves with you could have uh, and- you could have uh, you could have swag. You could have your own boy named Barbara gold shoes that you can buy yeah, from your the, merch store. Oh, wow. We, we're, we're channeling the same vision right now because yeah. um, I actually see that being partnered with like a, a great fashion brand. And yeah. I can't think of any right now, so I'm going to say Barney's. So Barney's Premium. New York. Premium. Like, yeah. And you'd walk down the street and there's going to be like, that's probably a bad example because no one can afford that. You're, <laughs> you're going to walk down the... You went right <laughs> for Saks Fifth Avenue. I know. <laughs> I, I was like, you're a $3,000 gold <laughs> shoes. <laughs> they are... 24 carats. <laughs> Welcome to them. That will be an option. But that will be an option. Yeah. And the, uh, I picture like you walk down the street and then you'd see a display case full of gold shoes and all different variants. And then, um, then maybe in the background. Right. Beats. Yeah. Like Barber beats. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Oh, I know I sh- no, I know I know I, sh- I know I shouldn't, but I but did. I did. <laughs> I did. I'm picturing, I'm picturing a, a boy named Barbara at full, full steam. Yeah. A show with you just gold everything, gold he- gold headphones, gold suit, gold shoes. Holy shit! Gold underwear. Sure. Okay. Why yeah. Not? We'll throw it into. And then we just we just hit you with a spotlight, and you just <sighs> fucking blind everybody. Okay, this is Gustavo Cena. <laughs> yeah. You know how they make him look like liquid metal yeah. everywhere. It's yeah. This, this sort of the problem with that outfit choice is that when everybody gets their phone out, mm. it's so reflective oh, that you just yeah. turn into a big light blob. Right. Yes. <laughs> Which I guess could be really cool. Maybe yeah. that is a, yeah. a ray of light. Right. And, you know, it's funny that you say that. I actually had that experience. I, I worked uh, this uh, Fernet gig at the, at the Midway this last uh, well, Sunday. 
and uh, there was there was you know all this setup. It looked like a CrossFit setup with like all this like all this truss and these lights, and it was you know they they had this thing where it was like these bartender games where you where they where they you know I saw that on your story. Yeah, yeah, that's well, what that was. Yes, it was the bartender. It was like the X Games for bartenders. It did look like CrossFit. Yes. Yeah, and so you know all these bartenders from all over the city. It was a total fucking riot. It was it was a blast to work, you know, because these people are you know they're they're having to uh, mix these drinks and then hop on this fucking tricycle and like ride it through this like you know like uh, what what, uh, what the, uh, obstacle course. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> it took me a second there. Where's uh, the beer? We need another, yeah right yeah. Beer here? <laughs> Running low, um, and uh, they, they had they had uh, some of the girls were wearing these. These chicken uh, eagle heads, like these masks, you know, that you would see. Like, you know, you see those weird ones of like baby heads mm-hmm, and like bird mm-hmm, heads and all. Mm-hmm. And the, the backside of it was like, you know, bald eagle. It was like bright white. And at one point, this spotlight literally hit the back of the, the mask and it was blinding. It was like I couldn't even see anything else. I was yes. like, yes. Oh, oh, Jesus. Like, and so I, I envision that's what will, what well, will happen. Here's, um, here's what I'm wondering yeah. instead of turning me into a giant gold statue <laughs> behind us we have a big disco ball yeah. could that be a gold shoe a giant yes. gold shoe disco ball wow that you lower from the ceiling yeah and then pew, a, and a gold shoe made out of the same little disco ball squares thing. yep oh man like a giant gold <sighs> disco ball. that's not shoe, so hard gold to do shoe disco ball. we could do that okay well let's let's work on that yeah We'll make one. We'll we'll do a mock up, a prototype, and then we'll put it. We'll hang it in your studio. Yeah, my studio um, currently has these um, very similar, actually, very disco ball like gold construction boots that are on spinners. And there's so I have two um, behind my dot and workstation. There are two big um, shelves, and then I've got these two construction boats that have gold reflectors and glitter mm-hmm. all over them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're on turntables, and oh. they put jewelry lights all over them. <laughs> so then they can turn off all the other lights, you know, very dim lighting around it. And then I just have these spinning gold <laughs> shoes, and it lights up the sparkles all over the. And then oh, I get to work, amazing. and I make my things. And yeah, I get to. I get started crying. Right, I love it. Your studio is is killer, by the Thank way. You. So I'm jealous. Uh, that you have that space, but uh, well, if LA comes to be, <laughs> yeah. it could be available. Yeah. This could be yours, <laughs> right? Yeah, this could be yours. I'm just jealous of your rave cave, and I can't wait till I get booked there. Who do I yeah. talk to about getting booked at the rave cave? Well, we're gonna do it. We'll, I want to we'll, play. We'll do, we'll do I want to play. I want to we'll, book. You know a, what? I want to headline the rave. Let, cave. Let's let's do one before you leave. We'll do one in the next like like <gasps> so two like, two or three weeks. This is like a special send off rave. Yeah, this is, right. This is an important rave. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I've been I've been looking for another another. DJ hang. What do so. we what do we have like a capacity for ten people? Yeah, we could do probably fit fifteen. Fifteen people. Okay, so yeah. we've got fifteen slots. If you want to yeah. be a part of this night, you just have to get in touch with us. And in the modern age, if you can't find us, <laughs> <laughs> there's a big problem because we're very findable. We have fifteen slots. You want to be there at the a boy named Barbara Rave Cave goodbye celebration and bash? Let us know. I don't know how I feel about you inviting random strangers to my house. <laughs> Oh my gosh! The first instinct is like <laughs> everyone who watches this is our friend. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. It would be a blast. It would be a blast. And if you're not, you will be by the time you leave the rave cave. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I have this philosophy about life that everyone is my friend. I just haven't met them yet. Oh, I and like that. And that I just like. Yeah. Th- I just think that. Right. Um, and this, this, um, we're all in this together thing mm-hmm. that. And whatever we're in, whatever trouble we're in, that we that we be in it together. And then I was, I was at the studio, some um, late delirious night last the end of last year, the beginning of last year, um, and I was just getting started in this music thing. And I was, um, I used this phrase "weeby" a lot. And this, wait, I, wait, weeby, what? weeby, weeby. What's what's weeby? Well, that's all of a sudden, like, like a collective, this group that like, we're all friends. We're all be, we oh. be in this together. We oh, be a collective. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. be okay. this. Okay. okay. And I thought, like, oh, there's something too, man. We be. That's fun language. Like we be. That's a song. Mm. Imagine a song called We Be. Yeah. What would that be like? Yeah. Uh, and then I started thinking about how, like, we all my friends, friends I haven't met yet, but will meet. Everyone watching this, who I soon will be friends with, we be. 
and when we're out listening to electronic music in the middle of you know, the night on some Friday or Saturday night or for lucky Sunday or maybe Monday too. Yeah. Um, that this notion that we be, I wanted to make this song that we be drunk, mm. we be high, we be horny, but here we be, you there and we me. Be. <laughs> I like we it. be the weebies. <laughs> we <laughs> and I just thought, like, this is going to be a song of acceptance. Like, we're just yes. like, here we are in whatever state, whatever shape, whatever you're here, however I'm here, right. we be. Here, yeah. we, here yeah. we be. <laughs> yeah. And we be the weebies. That's amazing. And uh, I tried to write the song like six different ways, and I had so much fun with it, but it always ended up with this sort of Teletubbies like vibe. <laughs> Real hard to shake that. And I enlisted the help of an incredible friend of mine. Shout out to Envy Royal. She mm. collaborated on a different track on the project, and she is an incredible rapper. And this girl's got swagger like you wouldn't believe. Mm. Um, and if anyone embodies cool, Envy Royal embodies cool. She is a I can't even, even when I picture myself in the most cool state I could possibly ever inhabit in my human existence, it doesn't come close to how she exists in her life. And I thought, if anyone can help me save this, uh, and, and she did a great job with it. And not even her could be like, okay, this song, she was like, this is the best I can do. And she brought back brilliance. And I kept working on it, kept reviving it, and kept evolving it. And sometimes when you're working with creative ideas, when you have inspiration, the beauty is in this, this relationship you start to have with the idea and mm. the morphing of it and the chasing yeah. of it and like this allure that it has where it doesn't really let you go. Right. Like you're in it and you're going to like, you're captive to seeing it through and seeing what is the expression. Yeah. I got a bunch of those. Right? Yeah. And I think that... Uh, I find that to be the magic. I think that's the mm. most the laced with the magic. And this song morphed and changed and like yeah. and became it grew and like it just kept um, becoming something so special. Uh, and then ultimately, this the song landed in the lap of this incredibly talented singer, songwriter, uh, rapper, just incredible woman in Bourbon, and she's out of L.A. and she is a a beautiful Puerto Rican woman from the Bronx who embodied the characteristics and understood the spirit of what I wanted to communicate, but found new language for me to articulate it. Um, and what the biggest mistake I made about music is to think that music was something that, and that I was going to express and that this mm -hmm. is something that I was going to do from within me. And I mm -hmm. learned throughout this entire process, walking up to like create original music and bring forth something was that, Oh, music is a team sport. And at least in my experience, it's in the collaboration with another yeah. that when you see something like go beyond you to become something of its own. And when it takes life for itself, where you, yeah. how, you were part of the process to bring it into the world, but um, it lived through the expression and became something new. And that's sort of the magic of what happened. And uh, this song then um, became... Uh, this really special track it's called I think I like it now so mm. and uh, she says <laughs> that you know uh, we be just as we be like and she has this like same like notion and phrase in the the hook of the song but in, she, in this language she's like you know here we be just like we be but she's like you don't like it kick rocks by like she has this <laughs> great language of like here we are we're doing our thing in a picture of a room like this with your friends <laughs> with your group with your posse with your people having a great time and you're in your space and there's all this different language in the song um listen to it if you like you got to listen to it because is this spirit of it, what she captures is so great she gets the notion of it and then she articulates it in this great language of like um it, if you don't like it, give rocks. Like, I, <laughs> I love I that. Like it. yeah. And it's just, am it's amazing track. She's just, a, it's just brilliance. And have you ever worked on a song where you, where you get to the end of it and you've created it and you're like, wow, that just came through that. I was yeah. a part of that. Yeah. Like you sort of stand back in awe of the whole thing. And yeah. like, wow. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, so, you know, there, there's, uh, definitely been times where I've kind of not been, you know, uh, I had something I liked and I was kind of hit a little bit of a roadblock and, and, and I've, I've uh, been doing this thing lately where I, I, I just mentally, I'm, I, like, I, I become like a drill instructor in my head. And I'm like, no, just keep going. Just keep going. Like, like you know, because you have that voice in your head where you're like, oh, this just isn't working. And then, you know, but you, but you know you have something you like. And then this little drill instructor in the back of my head is like, no, fuck that. Keep going. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, like I'm in like a CrossFit class for music. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, um, you know, I've had these moments where, where yeah, like, like you know, uh, I've just kept going. And then I've... I've, I've found something that I'm like, wow, like this is fucking, this is working. This is awesome. And you get really stoked. Um, 
lately I've been, you know, also doing this thing where I've been giving myself uh, like a day to finish oh. a track. And I've, to, I've told you about this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, forcing myself to just, and it, this doesn't work with every tra- every genre, I should say, you know. Uh, my friends with benefit stuff sometimes, you know, but some genres are just inherently take a little bit more time. But um, with this Playa House stuff, I've just been like, no, like, because I have this, I have a, have a goal. Um, next year at Burning Man, I want to play an all original set of my own stuff. And so, you know, that that's, you know, do the math, that's roughly, you know, 15 to 20 songs, you know, an hour. Um, that's not undoable. Yeah, that's, that's no, not that's not uh, difficult. You but know? I do think that if you want 15 to 20 great songs, you write 200 great songs. Yeah, for sure. It's this editing process. Yeah. This like, yeah. it's all a dedication to yes. the craft. Yeah. So the spirit of like, of applying yourself with dedication and diligence to the yeah. craft and giving yourself one day, giving yourself parameters to right. work with, and right. only helps you evoke yeah. like that, which would, and I am, um, I'm really inspired by that. I, I've been thinking about, I don't know that I could be as ambitious as you as a one day. Cause one day is, I mean, there's a lot of work by the way, if anyone's listening to this, that doesn't make electronic music, it's a lot of work. Mm. It's a lot harder than it looks. And to do a track in a day is a huge accomplishment. It's a big deal. So that in and of itself, if, if I were listening to this before I did this, I'd probably be like, yeah, okay, cool. You're pumping out in a day. Awesome. Yeah. How, right. I mean, cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's the, that's actually like really, I think that's really impressive. I think it takes a lot of work, a lot of, deli- and I'm, I'm impressed that you can do that. I think yeah. I'm, I'm, my goal is maybe a week. Yeah. There's um, yeah. this idea. Zoo did this when he was creating his work early on mm. where he, I think he did um, project 52, which oh. 52 songs in a year. So oh, it was just wow. like every week, finish a song, yeah. every week, finish a song, yeah. every week, That's finish so a song. It's kind of the same thing. You know I mean? Not every You're track <laughs> is getting finished <laughs> in a, a day. day. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm giving my, I, it's gotta be like 80% finished. Oh, okay. All right. You know what I mean? Um, but still, that's a huge, but still, yeah. And, it took and, me months to do my tracks. And, and I've also, I've, I've relaxed certain practices, yep. um, you know. Uh, well, with you have that, to. Yes, you it have to. It forces you to. Right. Like, I can't make every sound from scratch if I'm giving myself a day. Oh. So, no. you know, I'm, I'm, using, uh, I'm using, you know, uh, samples and, yep. you know, uh, uh, using some presets. You know, a lot, a lot of them, are, but not even just presets. Like, what I'm doing is a lot of times I get, I'll get caught up in this, like, I need to make this super sick like patch, you know, with my synthesizer or yeah. whatever, and and, uh, and and you could you could spend so much time just, just coming day. up that you for sure just coming up with with a couple of synth sounds, but what I'm doing and what I'm finding is I will, with this new limitation, this new timeline, um, it, what I'll do is I'll, I'll choose a synth that I know has good characteristics, mm-hmm. right, that I already like the sound of. Mm-hmm. And I'll just quickly dial in some things and make a couple little, you know, like envelope, you know, a couple, you know, oscillators and a little detuning, whatever, and um, choose the kind of octave I want it to be in and then just bring it up in my push two and just play with it, oh, you know, my push two over some drums. And I, I found that, like, yeah, and maybe throw on some quick effects. And, and, and with that limitation and kind of this melting of, like, of, of like, no, it needs to be this, you know, all, all it needs to be this grand thing. I found that I really, I, it doesn't need to be, yeah. I, you know, I, I come up with these great sounds that, that just, it, I'm really happy with, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, I think too, like if you just choose something that, you know, has a good character, like it, it's kind of this hardware mentality, yeah. right? Because there's been whole, I mean, listen to the eighties. Yeah. 80s music was like all these like you know the Yamaha uh, D- DXM and all this stuff and um, uh, D- or DX7 or whatever all these like FM synths and that sort of thing and a lot of it is just like even a lot of the like Phil Collins stuff like it's a lot of like presets like straight out of the keyboards and that was just you know people back then like they you know they didn't really it wasn't really easy to edit these synths you know and now we take it for granted because we have these vsts and mm. all these tutorials and now it's kind of this thing where it's like oh if you're not creating every fucking synth sound from scratch from and scratch. you know like, like hurting your own goats and make your own you know drum skins and yeah. all this stuff you know it's like um it's it's more just melting it back to just just creating sounds and just putting them together and making sure they don't clash and making sure there's a groove really just make, make sure there's a groove. That's what I'm focusing on. That's what you heard in that track mm-hmm. is just using this, you know, I, I'm, I'm basically using, I'm using diva. Yep. I'm using my poly evolver and I'm using that, that, uh, that, that, uh, SU 700 sampler. That's pretty much it. The idea is so much more important. Yeah. And that idea in your track is really 
really perfect. It's like get the great groove. It's so freaking danceable. Yeah. And the um, this quest for building from the ground up on every single step of the way and every single sound you do and every single sound many times has layers. Mm. So you might want one bass sound and that might have three layers. You might want sure. yeah. one great one great lead sound that you add over it. Well, that might have three. I mean, it can be, if you are holding yourself to the standard that every time you have to build that from the ground up, mm. that can be a daunting, like stumbling block. And it can get in the way of the own flow of allowing yourself to like get into the really important work, which is getting the groove right, which is right. getting the, the moment right. right. And, and think, creating songs. Creating songs. Which is actually which creating is what songs. This is the point of the whole thing. That's the point. That's, yeah. That's the point. Unless you just want to just, create cool synth patches which is fine too absolutely or just ideas you know absolutely. some people just like to create you know i've got buddies that just they don't want to be a musician or a dj or whatever they just have ableton and maybe they have a synth or whatever yeah. and they just like to plink around make cool sounds and that's that's fine too you know? and i do think it's not all or nothing in this case i think it's a great example of like where i i find you know many producers have a very unique style of maybe a, a top line synth uh, yeah. and all of the other supporting synths you can't necessarily distinguish as being all that unique they all play a great role mm -hmm. but maybe there's a certain type of top line that is used for color and that's what you know oh that gives away this is that producer yeah and it took me a while to realize like oh wow you know like the focus or energy on creating one component of the sound landscape that mm. is unique and interesting and very much them uh, but the rest of it all just plays, they're all supporting actors and they all yeah. play that role. Yeah. Uh, and so allowing in your own music to like realize that they, you know, every single sound doesn't have to like be the, you know, the hero, best leading actor, that they can be all different levels. And that you can use these tools like presets mm -hmm. that can be just starting jumping off points that you can custom and color and like right. all these different ways right. that you can customize and make unique, unique in your own so it's, it's limitless. But yeah. removing creative blockers is so beautiful part yeah. of the process. That was a big blocker for me. You literally nailed it, you know. And so that was me kind of tricking myself and knocking that out, you know. Um, I also, too, you know, something, I, the more that I, the more podcasts that I, that I do, I'm realizing, the, I keep saying these things, and now they're becoming my mantras. Yeah. Um, which I like, because now it's creating this, this you know, the thing that, that now I'm, I say it so much that I'm hearing myself say it so much that I'm practicing it more, which yeah. is awesome. Um, but, you know, I really do, I, I think, you know, each musician, each uh, producer, music producer, when you're making these songs, you're, it's like very similar to how a DJ, like you, you create this set of these songs that are not yours. Mm -hmm. But when you listen to like a Justin Martin set or whatever, and all of these songs that he's selected, that sounds like a Justin Martin set, right? So all of these sounds that you're selecting, whether they're from sample packs or the presets or they're little ones that you made, maybe they're big, big presets that took you two days or whatever. Yeah doesn't really matter like sure maybe sometimes you want to create this really intricate thing that kind of you use in all these tracks to become your your sound that nobody can figure out that's awesome but i tend to think that the the bulk of of what you choose based on your your own ears yeah. and your own brain is going yeah. to without even having to try very hard that's going to be your sound like your sound is so inherent in you that you wow. could not you, yes you could not yes yes you could not like I have I have a yeah. tough time like so I've actually sat down just for shits and giggles and tried to like recreate other people's songs just to see how close I could get. Mm -hmm. And it's fucking it's it's hard because, you know, even when I'm trying to recreate other people's things like I, it ends up sounding like me. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, because in a sense your sound is your radar, it is your taste, it is your palette. Yeah. So all the micro decisions when you're making countless of them through the process, yeah. you're weeding out things, you're gravitating towards things, you're shaping things intuitively, you're making decisions on how you EQ a sound and how you filter the thing and yeah. what you do with the cutoff. All of those are all built out of what intuitively feels like that's, the, that's where I'm going. Right. And I love this language that you're giving. I love what you're saying with this because you're really rooting it in like that's your hardwired into you, that your radar in you when you sit down and work. Yeah. Whatever comes out of you in terms of that palette and that curiosity and that spectrum is right. your sound that's yes. you that is yeah. your sound uh i have found that uh when i went to make a body of work because mm -hmm. i i made i made 
music and sounds and like songs all before, but I'd never sat down with like, okay, my pro- I'm, I'm taking on a project and mm. I'm going to create a small album. You know, I'm going to create an EP. I'm creating six tracks that I'm going to complete at a high and professional level. Yeah. When I decided to do that, um, I made a very conscious decision to do all of the songs iteratively. So not f- I didn't finish song one, then move on to song two, then move on to song three. Instead, I did like the bass layers for all of them. I like worked oh. on all of them, and I sort of built all of them up together collectively as a body of work. That's cool. And the beauty that that allowed me to do was allow that like radar to refine itself through the process. It was allow that taste to pro- and so I could continually be going back to the songs that were maybe a few that I hadn't touched for a month and bring them mm. back up and bring the body of work together so that it yeah. felt a little bit more cohesive. cohesive. Yeah. And um, it also allowed for um, the process of marination. And I think that like a big part of this deal is like actually letting, letting stuff sit for a while, letting it sit in you, letting it just mm. sit and simmer, let it just yeah. marinate, let the flavors get acquainted. Yeah. Um, so that you can bring back new and fresh inspiration. And I don't think you should wait too long so that you don't lose the idea. But I think if you have the right degree of like separation from the idea, it enhances mm-hmm. your ability to like move it forward and move the ball forward. I think it's a great, uh, great approach. And I think that for myself too, with how ADD I am with my, all my various fucking like aliases, like if I were to, if, when I want to create something cohesive, I think I need to take one of two approaches. It neither needs to be that where I kind of make things piece by piece, you know, dr- all the drums and all the bass lines and, uh, and, or, uh, do it all in a very short amount of time. Oh yeah. Because yep. I yep. tend to run in these cycles where, you know, um, I, I'm going to sound, I'm going to, uh, you know, I, I gravitate, uh, kind of do this thing where I, you know, um, uh, I'm feeling this certain thing this, this month and this uh, certain thing this month. And so I think if I can kind of crank them out, you know, um, uh, quicker, you know, like, like I've, I've been doing, then, then that might create, create some cohesion as well. In, uh, not always, oftentimes yeah. I've, I've found that I needed to actually limit the amount of time I spent working in, in my dog in a given day. Oh wow. Yeah. Because so much of it's a mind game. Yeah. And, uh, what happened when I would extend into really long hours, really long working sessions or, or whatever, you can, you can actually like get into the space where you can um, over fixate, over dwell, over like it's over correct. It's yes. detrimental to yeah. the process. Yeah. So working actually, working actually on shorter timelines with mm. it, or shorter time windows within a given day yeah. was helpful because at the end of the day, when the, when the session is up, when the time is up, when the, when it's, you have to put it, put it down. Yeah. Walk yeah, away, right. like leave it, yeah. let it be. Yeah. Uh, and in doing that in close collaboration, like, and I chose to like work really collaboratively with others and, and tap into like the talents of so many other people that would bring like great voice into it, work with people in this project. Um, that was really helpful because then um, I could really not like get into that space where you get fatigued at For the end sure. of the day. And then your decision like the decision tree yeah. and like, the and, the, and then you listen to it the next day and you're like, this is dog shit. Where did it go? Right. I, where'd the whole idea go? Right. Like I worked it into the ground and yeah. I lost it. Uh, and so there's something to be said for, I think small, quick bursts, mm. but, um, that can work in a day, like where you do a small, quick burst or a small, quick burst on a project, like right. where you set aside, maybe a month yeah. is dedicated to this body of work. If it with, happens. with the caveat of there are times where you're just feeling so inspired. Oh, you're yeah. like, I'm riding this let's train. Let it, let's let it go. Right. But no, yes. I, I agree with you hundred percent. And actually that's something that's made my music a lot better lately is, um, I recognize that, um, I was, you know, getting stuff done during the day and then I would sit down and be like, all right, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to enjoy myself and, and, uh, and make some music. And I realized that like, I just kept, I would, I would make things and I would, just like I said, I would wake up and I'd be like, God, this just doesn't sound very good. And then I was like, you know what? Like, I, I mean, I listened to that, I, or I read, uh, or listened to an interview with Claude Von Stroke and he said that he would wake up every day and first thing he would make this little song idea, like a song, even if it was just a, you know, a loop or whatever, he would at least, the very least start, start the day off with that. And I mean, he's crazy. He would wake up at like 5 a.m. and he's got a completely different schedule than me. But I, I love the mornings. Yeah. So I'd be right there with but, you. But so I, I didn't go that far. But what I did start doing is I started, <laughs> I started trying to make music every day that I could, right? Oh, if I didn't have work or yeah, whatever. Yeah. But that got me to start making music earlier in the day. And then I was thinking, like, look, like, if I'm, you know, if I'm dedicating my, my peak hours my, my, with my, the most amount of 
energy and mojo to my, you know, to my fucking like errands or something. You know what I mean? Like, why do those, why does that get my energy? You know what I mean? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit down. What a good, what a good way to think of it. Yeah. Why does like doing laundry, why why does like, why does that get your your best energy? Your best hours. You're fresh. You're like fully like, why in the world? (laughs) Yeah. That can get the leftovers. Exactly. So, so that's what I've been doing is I've been starting a song, you know, and, and kind of treating it like you just said, like I'll sit down and I'll, I'll try to make something. And if I'm feeling inspired and, and I found too, that more often than, than before I, I, that turns into eight hours of making music. Like I, like, like if I have a Sunday and then boom, I've nailed out a song because I started it mm. with energy and I started it. And, and so everything was flowed faster. And you, once you're in it, you're, yeah, this is, it's so sticky. It, that it's just so like, easy to right. keep going, right? Yes. And then, and then, you know, and then I'll do my laundry at fucking 9 p.m. or whatever. Yeah, right. You know? Right. And when you're tired. Yes. Because it doesn't matter. Right. And then, but then there's also, you know, so there are like times where I'm like, look, I'll just, I'll give this a couple hours. And then, you know, if I start to wind down, I'm like, I'm just going to play some video games. Yeah. I'm going to watch yep. some YouTube. Because, yep. like you said, like if you force, if you're trying to force these, this, this energy out of you and this inspiration, there's there's two parts to this you know uh, there, there's you, you know you, you can't only make music when you're inspired because relying on this perfect amount of inspiration to get anything productive done is yeah. not going to happen all that often yeah. so that's a bullshit excuse you yeah. know like there is perseverance like yes. sometimes you just have to yes. sit down and you just have to force yourself that's right. through i'm not inspired yep. and get stuff done that's right out of Discipline. Yes, out of, out of discipline. discipline. That being said, if you give it your best effort and you're still not feeling it, yeah. just, you know, spend that time with something. Be like, okay, right now is not the time. I'm going to enjoy myself. Maybe I'll open the DAW back up or my sampler or whatever. And then, you know, uh, if I'm not feeling inspired to make something cohesive, that's when I'll uh, – turn on my synthesizer and I'll start, I'll just make patches, you know, yeah. cause there's, it's a different goal, yes. you know, now we're just, yes. now we're just fiddling. Yes. We're just, we're just poking around. And we're like, Oh, Oh, wow. That's great. And, and then that's sometimes keep, yeah, keep that. That's great. And yeah. then, and then this, that, this has happened too, where I like, I, I've, I've gone into it with that mentality. I'm just going to poke around and create some sounds. And then you create the sound you're like, you know, what would sound really good. Yeah. That is this. And then you fucking add this thing. And then four hours later, you've got a track. You're like, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. Like I just, I wasn't, but all right. I love how so much of it's connected to curiosity of like, oh, this is cool. What would it sound like if I? Yeah. How, oh, what would that? Hmm, that could be good if I. Yeah. And these things just sort of like, then you try it and you're like, oh, that wasn't right, but this could be. Yeah. And then. Yes. Curiosity you know, for me is curiosity everything. Curiosity is so embedded in the whole thing. Yeah. It, it, um, even now when we were just listening to uh, my body of work, I was still feeling like, oh, but what if I, what mm. if I muted that one part? And what if I came in? earlier should that hang more like yeah. i just but all of it's rooted in curiosity because right. you don't know and then you try it and you think oh yeah well, that's a good idea yeah. nope that didn't go anywhere nope, didn't oh. work <laughs> <laughs> that was nothing to but it but at least you tried it but yeah, yeah or, or you know sometimes you're like oh that was that was good that was great but it's yeah. all rooted in like such deep curiosity right and i've only had awareness this last couple of weeks certainly this last week um into something that i think i uniquely struggle with mm. because i was born out of the corporate world and mm-hmm. i live in a space of like um enterprise growing something um marketability and thinking too often about how um i'm going to sell the work mm. how uh, will it be received mm. um what dj would play it in their set what it would be, how marketable is this mm. work um, and that's so deeply embedded into just the way I think because of all the background that I've got um, coming out of that world mm. that um, even when I think about my own my own you know, body of work or my brand or my future or my whatever, I can so easy, easily oscillate into that yeah. space of being able, which I guess you need at some point. You no, know, no, it's, every think, great artist recognizes it's a brand. I think that will be a, build it. a huge boon for what you're doing, but also uh, I'll say selfishly, I'm, I'm utilizing a lot of your knowledge oh. and any of the, the help that you've given me so far has just been even just bouncing ideas and getting your, your, your feedback, having your experience has been massively helpful, you know? Um, I think you're going to have to do kind of with that uh, on a certain to a certain degree, kind of what I had to do with music school, mm-hmm. where with music school, I mean, I, w- w- you know, engineering school, uh, I, I learned so much and I learned it was so vast. And 
Um, it was so helpful, but at the same time, they impart all these like, oh, to do like, you never do this because of X, Y, and like you never add a compressor to a hi hat. Yeah. You never do this or yes. or you know, and but all that stuff was you know they were teaching like. It was like school of rock, you know what I mean? It was like for like rock and pop and like, you know, hip hop. And it wasn't really, they weren't thinking about electronic music, you know what I mean? So a lot of this stuff I've had to like unlearn and like shed, you know? And so I think that that's That's what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to shed a lot of it. Keep the things that are the gems. That's right. And the rest of it. And I think for the the imitation of the the shedding part of it, what I'm really realizing now is that um, for, for, as I continue, so early in this process, as I continue to go deep into it, mm. um, letting letting art do what art does, which is sometimes flow without reason, which yeah. is sometimes have a place to exist because it needs to exist, not because it makes sense or it is marketable. Um, and for... Um, uh, so just just living in balance with this yeah. is like going to be so important, and and recognizing there's pieces of this that I just need to shed. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so this is, I think we're this is, we're, this is a good balance though yeah. that we have between yes. the two of yeah, us. Yeah, it really is because I'm kind of the opposite where I'm just making stuff and yeah. then kind of constantly trying to figure out like, okay, where do I put this? Like, where do, how does this fit into anything? You know what I mean? And so I think that if we can kind of you know. Uh, just kind of uh, vibe off each other's uh, polarities. Totally. totally. I, I don't know why. I default ultimately with, with everything. I'm like, oh, but where does this fit in your like hierarchy of all your things? And what's your growth strategy? And how are you going to like... <laughs> I, I, I don't know why I always think that way, but I yeah, think that way. Yeah, I'm yeah. just like preconditioned to think that way. Yeah. And, uh, like sometimes like they tracks, these tracks, they don't need a growth strategy. Like they don't... Right. You don't need a growth strategy to like be in neon lights. And, and like that is... Um, that is something that I'm going to like dance with. That yeah. is something that's going to continually be part of the process. Yeah. But I ultimately want for you um, to experience like a different dimension of like sharing in all this that you've got and all the music that you have. Yeah. And there's going to be so much around the corner for you. I really believe in this like momentum that's behind you right now. And, any way that I can help fuel that and be a part of that is really exciting for me. Dude, I mean, I, I totally, I'll be the first to admit, I need some corralling. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, for sure. <laughs> oh, don't we all? Yeah. I think everyone needs a big sister. Kind I need of a sheep like, dog. Right, yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. A border collie You're that right. just sort of like lives with us that could just like push us in the right direction. Yeah. <sighs> but the, the fact that we're sitting here with these really great headphones, by the way. They're really nice. I Dude, can wear they, these. Just They don't fatigue. They're fantastic. The clarity. And I'm not just saying that because Pioneer no. sent them to us. But Thank you again, Ryan Roth. Seriously, they're, great headphones. They're the, I think they're the best headphones I've ever used. But clearly, they're, you're, you're corralling whatever degree of corralling you're applying to yourself. Mm-hmm. That drill sergeant in your head yes. is doing a great job <laughs> because you're getting something done in that we're, we're sitting here enjoying this conversation with these great headphones and right. this great environment. And right. so like the momentum is, like at your, the wind is at your back. Yeah. And that is something that's so exciting. You know, I, this is something I firmly believe in um, that everybody should strive to do. And, and, and fortunate that I've found, uh, I've been able to do this with something that I, I, I enjoy so much. But I really feel like, uh, and this is a, this is, you know, Gary Vee says this all the time. This is, this is not just a music thing. It's, it's a, it's a life thing. It's a business thing. If you want people to reciprocate to what you're doing, you have to give back. Yeah. You have to give before yeah. you get, you That's know right. what I mean? I believe that fully. A hundred percent. And so, you know, the, the fact that I can do this and, and, and have these amazing people on and my friends and, and have these great conversations and just, you know, talk about what it is that excites us and, and, yeah. and, 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 you know, uh, bounce around and reciprocate these, these, uh, this, this knowledge and these ideas that w- we're coming up with. Um, you know, I mean, you've watched the uh, bulk of the episodes and yeah. you've gleaned stuff from yes. it and yes. I've gleaned stuff. Yes. I've learned so much just from having people on. I mean, it's yeah. really like, it's a win, win, win. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, people that are watching wherever you are, like I just, all I hope is that you, you know, you're, you're learning stuff from, from the podcast. That's yeah. literally all it's for. It's, it's for my own selfishness because I, I just want to, I, that's really actually the, the, the if you want to boil it down, the, the number one reason is I just want to corral people into, to, you know, talk, talk to me about music. Yeah. <laughs> that's all it is, you know, cause as I, I, I would, 
I remember, uh, you know, going to going to ritual uh, at Temple. It was yeah. like the, the dub, when dubstep was at its peak. There's and your, your Skrillex days. Exactly. Yes. Like, I've seen the connection. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, I would hang out in the smoking section, and I found myself more often than not hanging out in the smoking section. And every night, I was just having a conversation with 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 someone else. Yeah. You know, someone new, and we would just yeah. be talking about music and whatever fashion, if they were a producer or whatever. And um, I think it's kind of that's that this is ultimately scratching that itch and and beyond like you know that's probably one of my favorite parts about uh the community the greater community of electronic music and how accessible the production part of the Mm. craft is because there are so many creators out here doing things and uh i went to a show uh about yeah it was like late spring early summer and uh, Jillian Gray, do you know Jillian Gray? Are you listening to him? Oh he's yeah, from, he's on Mousetrap. Yeah. He's like a terrific, yeah. terrific producer. Yes. He's fantastic. Um, and but he's a little under the radar. And um, the show was scheduled to be at Rickshaw, and weird flu cap. I don't know whether it's sales. I, my guess is ticket sales were soft. Mm. So the show um, day before or day of gets officially canceled at Rickshaw, and they move everyone to uh, one of the people somehow associated with the label or him had an apartment that they could use the rooftop and it wasn't sanctioned so everyone had to be quiet they funneled all the all of us up there and there was probably i don't know 50 people on the rooftop with this and they set up this kind of makeshift table and there we were on this beautifully foggy summer in in that stuff it's really foggy in the summertime so so it gives us really great vibe so we're there in this evening this great fog and amazing music uh, with with Julian just having a, a great time. That's way better than the show. Way better. <laughs> way upgrade. A way upgrade. One hundred percent. Yes. Upgrade. One hundred. It's like your own private boiler room. It was a private boiler. That's exactly what wow. it turned into. Wow. And um, one of the guys that happened to be waiting um, to get up to that rooftop and on the rooftop just happened to start a conversation with him. Mm. His name's Spencer, and next thing you know, he and I are right now working on a new track together. We've become <sighs> good friends, and wow. you know, just the ability to like the smoking section. This is when you strike yeah. up these conversations, you find yeah. this shared love, yeah. and you know. He also is trying to figure out what the world of production is all about, too. And he's got some great tracks under his belt. And I'm so excited to work with him. And we're collaborating on a project that he started. I'm totally inspired by it. Uh, it just gets me excited to think of, like, oh, my gosh, who's the next? Like, there's so many people out there that I like that. It's so inspiring. I can't wait to get more connected to it. Um, and there's just I feel like every show I'm meeting more and more great people, more and more great people that are connected to and share the love of this yeah. art that we love so much. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, we recently got to see Black Coffee, and it was an amazing show. Oh, my God. Was, show. Yeah. So good. One of my favorites was your friend Katie. Oh, yeah. Katie Stone. Incredible. Shana. Yeah. Like, I've never met anyone that likes techno more than that. Like, oh. no, the, the true passion and what she, she it's is incredible. Her, her heart is that black heart emoji. Yeah. Yeah. She's techno to the core. The core. The core. And absolutely glows about it. Yeah to a level and to a degree and the language she uses that I haven't heard from anyone else ever. Yeah. And I'm just, she's uh, so good. She, she, she DJs in like the way that she DJs is she's just constantly layering two songs. Yeah. And it's insane because it never sounds like it never clashes. It never sounds off. It's just this perfect blend of like two songs. And you're like, you can't quite, put your finger on like what and that's her sound that's it she's just constantly like layering up tracks which i don't really know anybody else that does that that's so it's cool. wild it's and so that's cool. just that's just her thing and it works so well incredible yeah incredible yeah and so inspired by it and that, right. that kid the greater community that we're going to plug into that are that are into this this vibe and also shared part of it um, is why I think that this podcast is so special. It needs to exist because yeah. it's sort of becoming a hub for the so many people that are, like, at any any level of interest in it. Right, right. I, I'm just I'm. Uh, I was telling Bruce earlier. Uh, I'm just uh, I'm so so thankful to have all of you guys, you know, um, and have this thing that we're doing. This you know this community, yeah. you know, yeah. um, with 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 headroom and with Halcyon and with, with the podcast and just everything, our own music and everything that we're doing. And, um, it just, it's, it's, there's never been more community. That's right. It's been in my life for sure. And, and then, you know, I've been, I've 
been in many different music scenes and that sort of thing, and they're always fun. But they tend to they tend to always kind of be centered around partying, which you know, parties are fun, you know. But I kind of always felt like you know, uh, they were never enough about the music. They were always more on the party side, and this is way more on the music side, and that's what I truly want, you know, because. Yeah. At the end of the day, like we're you know when when you when you make music and you go see shows, we go see black coffee and we hang out and have our DJ hangs or we <clears throat> you know you play out at a club yeah. and you're there until four a.m. or whatever. Like that's the party. That's yep. that's the party. But if you're just going out all the time, you're not being productive. Yeah. You know, like like this is this is techno. Yeah, that's right. You know what I mean? That's right. Yeah. That yeah the. Uh, the opportunity we have to kind of like grow as a collective of people that are have a shared interest in the space and also are moving in a direction about like you know giving back to that space by the creation of our own artists like yeah. is also really fun and I, I I love the shared notion of like supporting other artists who are also on a similar path at right. some level right. uh, we were all like on this journey, maybe one person is just a little step ahead and they can point out a rock so that you don't trip over it. Absolutely. And then you can right. point that rock out to the person that's right behind you. Right. And like, we're all in this together. And it and never feels like a competition. It's no. the same as like headroom. It's yeah. like, Oh, which by the way, yeah. music expo. Yeah. It's coming up this week. Yes. We're actually playing. Yes, we're getting right. sets together. Do you know what you're playing? This uh, no idea. What, what persona of Scott is showing up to the music expo? We're all <laughs> playing some sets at headroom, um, for the music expo this Saturday and Sunday. I, th I think because I, um, I recently just started kind of DJing again and you know, I, I, I spent many hours. I mean, you know how long it takes to find the music that you want. You know, like before top 10, what else? <laughs> Dude, you're overthinking it. <laughs> Whatever poly D. Click by. <laughs> yeah. Easy. Call it a day, bud. Uh. <laughs> hours of work. Crowd pleasers. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Beatport top 100 torrent <laughs> done. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I, I, I sift, uh, I sift through, um, sift through a lot of my various sources. So I think, you know, um, I will probably play a lot of what was kind of my playa set. I'll probably take some time to... Why am I not shocked? Well, surprised, yeah. <laughs> Shocking. Playa, your favorite word. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's a mild obsession. but The mother of inspiration that lives yeah. in, in the aura around you. Right. I, I'm, it's, it's probably so stereotypical. To, oh, he goes to Burning Man once and his whole <laughs> fucking life has changed. Like, I, I didn't can just say hear, it. I, I didn't hear, say I it. I didn't I, say I'm, it. I'm, I'm, I'm literally voicing what all the fucking lo long-time burners are probably thinking, you know? <laughs> and I'm fine with it. That's all right. That's fine. That's fine, you know. I know I got At least you own it. Yeah, exactly. At right. least you own yeah, it. <laughs> exactly. Oh. But I mean, I'm using it for good, right? I'm okay, not like. But there's two sets here. Uh, yeah. Are you doing? You're doing both Saturday and Sunday, right? Yes. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna do kind of Playa House. I'll probably put in some of my recent uh, tunes, um, and then s the next one will be drum and bass. Oh. Didn't even have to think twice about that. It's so convicted oh yeah that decision yes yeah yeah wow. i mean any opportunity that i can play drum and bass because it's not in my wheelhouse i mean it, it is in my wheelhouse but it's not what i'm i've only made yeah. one drum and yeah. bass song you yeah. know ever um i love it so much I, I i almost love it like more than than most other genres oh actually that's where's your core like if, do you have a core love um if you peel it all back in electronic music like mm -hmm. does your heart live in Drum and bass? Is that where your core love is? I, it's, it's this weird thing where drum and bass for me is this like, this like naughty mistress. Oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's this weird thing where I love it so much and it's so much fun. And it's like when you play drum and bass, it's so much fun to play. And it's got these like high energy vocals and it's fast. And, but at the same time, it's got this double time thing. And it's great for like the party scene. It's great for like you know like like the, the club environment, and the, the songs are shorter. You get through a lot of them faster, and mm -hmm. just all this excitement and stuff. But I, I don't make it. Um, I've only made one song, and, and I actually did like the song that I made, and it got pretty what well, was de well, decently received. Um, but you know, and and I maybe I'll venture into that. But currently, I have way too many things I want to be doing and am doing. Um, but you know, it's. It's just this thing where it's it's not, 
it's it's probably the one of the least commercially viable, unfortunately. You know, uh, yes, like drum and yes, bass yes, artists yes, yes. Uh, constantly struggle with the people that love drum and bass. You are their god. Like if yeah. you're if you're good at drum and bass, and you know the the people that drum and bass DJs at the top or, or upper level um, are getting booked and they're mm-hmm. you know they're getting paid well enough and you know they're ma- enough to live off of it and have studios and sort of thing, but not like Tiesto. Yeah. You know, yeah. not even like Claude Von Stroke. Well, that goes, I mean, that goes back to where that, that oscillating back and forth between art and business and yeah. like growth. And like at the end of the day, um, we're, there, we're also engaging in an art form that is commercial, that does yeah. have a marketplace. Yeah. And we have to be thought of the number one uh, genre in our industry is techno. Or we have, you know, then you have obviously this, this space of actually then the brand names like Tiesto and yeah. These, yeah. The, the, the Martin Garrix and the, Dimitri. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I guess like we, so there's all these like, but um, I think that there's, well, it clearly it sounds like there's room for another persona in your, <laughs> your ecosystem. There's a drum and perso- yeah. bass persona. I already have an alias oh, for it. See, yeah. like, not surprised. <laughs> not surprised at all. Collect them, collect them all. Uh, collect them all. Collect them all. But that uh-huh. is the the end of my alias. Like that is the official last one that I have had knocking around. Dot, dot, dot. For now. For now. <laughs> <laughs> to be continued. I mean, really, like, ultimately, I would like to be able to do nothing but just make music in this podcast. Yeah. In which case, it might be feasible, you know? Uh, Wolfgang Gardner had something like five or six commercial aliases for his house music yeah. in the early 2000s, and he was making good money, like, with all his various releases. Don't you know? put your eggs in one basket. Yeah. That's actually kind of smart. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If something goes up in smoke, like yes. you've got $5 yeah, exactly to right. count on. I feel so bad for the, uh, the, the, I only make dubstep. I know. Guys, you know, like, uh, like rise and fall. <laughs> yeah. The, um, well, I, I find it interesting because I'm always wondering what, what, what piece of success do you own? What part is in your control? You can be really mm. talented and craft great music and, how do you break as an artist? Because I think a lot about that. And I think a, a lot of people that are in similar places from all these different producers that are all trying and dreaming mm. of a day when they're selling out clubs and playing festivals and mm. signed to labels or own a label or whatever that be. And, um, I had a, through a beautiful divine coincidence, got a chance to have a deep conversation about this with someone who had launched one EDM, uh, who, a person who I consider to be an EDM star. Uh, and ultimately he told me that it's at the end of the day timing and that nothing mm. predicts it. Yeah. And it's true. Like yeah. the, you, the, the rigor you own as an artist, as a creator, as someone that's like creating, and you can even aim for um, the right marketplace in terms of what genre has growth and where do you see the most, you know, upside financially and potential in terms of a track taking off. Uh, but it really is just about timing yeah. and what uh, it, the right place, right time situation. And that's the hardest mm-hmm. part of like at the end of the day, it's, it's a, lives outside of our sphere of influence. Right. Uh, and um, I'm intrigued right now. I see a lot of growth and interest happening in, in more disco flavors and cues. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I don't know if you're seeing that as well. I'm seeing yeah. a lot of nods to disco and I'm seeing a lot of growth and popularity and, uh, yeah. Of, of, of both houses of labels that have references to disco or are truly disco labels, um, as well as um, cues into to disco into all different types of mm. genre at electric music, electronic music. So I love That's to like see that defected, right? It's like defected Glitterbox. I yeah. see it's showing up in place, even like when you look recent sets that Martin Garrix is playing out mm. and plays, it's showing up in Oliver Holden's and yeah. Future House and you have th- tracks like this groove bringing out these in monster slap basses yeah. that are, are living in a completely different genre well outside of a more like a defected house like Reva Star you mm. know Horse Meat Disco obviously yeah. you're going to have those cues in that underground UK house scene but to find these influences of disco emerging into other genres like Future House through Oliver Heldens or yeah. cre- creeping up into a Martin Garrix set is just show that there's this also uh, this this great desire for those great groovy places yeah. um, so I think that, that and then of course like seeing elements of tech um, house well, tech house tech um, you know melodic 
techno mm. techno is uh, expand and influence its popularities of techno is you know infiltrating so many other genres. Yeah, I love to see that growth and that trend's really exciting to think where that could go. Um, what are you seeing? Are you seeing any trends? Um, any trends that you're noticing? Well, yeah, I mean, just the the trend of techno is really fascinating for me right now. I mean, the the the, the particular synths that are being used in in techno. I mean, How so? It, like, um, there's a lot of these really just kind of uh, it's it's a really strange thing. It's these really kind of sinister synth lines in techno that's really dark, right? Yeah. But it's it's this really industrial dark like grinding sound, but it's it doesn't feel dark. It doesn't mm -hmm. feel. It's like it feels kind of high energy. It's this really polarizing thing that I don't really know what to, what to make of. Yeah, it, you dark, know? not heavy. Yeah, right, mm -hmm. right. And I mean, you, you look at the. I mean, it's it's almost this kind of like gothic vibe that's coming yeah. coming into techno right now, and it's working for a lot of people. A lot of my friends are like, yeah. like even their gothic, like style yes, is getting gothic. like gothic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it really works. Great language. This, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, like gothic techno almost. Yeah. But I guess unlike you know like the gothic emo kids in high school, it's not actually <laughs> uh, you know uh, like you know withering from turmoil emotionally. <laughs> like, <laughs> why? 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 Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, uh, a lot of like I'm hearing a lot of. So I kind of recently shockingly found out about um, so Stefan Bodzin. You know Stefan Bodzin? No, should I know? Oh, you should absolutely. Oh my God, this is this is one you should definitely like. As soon as you get home, I'll send you. I'll send you a link. Um, uh, it, there's a just the most epic set that he did on on top of this mountain top that Katie Stone showed me, and it's like a life changing set. And once I heard that, like I don't know if he's actually if his stuff is influencing the rest of techno or if he's just really good at that sound that's making its way into techno yes. but it's it's this this synth sound that they're using it's it's kind of this moog uh you know reverby affected like a kind of modulated sound um and it's really fucking dope and it's really really unexpected for me like mm. it just feels like it kind of came a techno kind of came out of left field you know yeah. um which i guess isn't and it's not that odd because you know i mean we kind of went from kind of uh oh where did it go when dubstepy stuff and then trappy and then from trap kind of into this like dirty bird trend which mm -hmm. actually isn't that shocking because it kind of has the same kind of swagger you know yep. but a little bit more of this like silliness um and then uh you know and then kind of now into um into I mean, techno is just it's it's a it's a mood right now oh, you know absolutely yeah and even artists like uh you know um uh, fuck, I'm, I'm spacing on what is it? Dirty Bird, uh, not uh, not Kill Frenzy, the other guy, uh, Will Clark. Oh, a lot of his stuff is yep. is really like uh, he's not even dabbling. He's just kind of going full techno, which I'm I'm like I'm into it. You know, the the minimal style of techno is really like connected with me, and I was yeah. late to the game. I admit yeah. it. I was absolutely late to it. But you just had Boris Brutsche in the house here, and I find him to be the just an absolute god in yeah. terms of his yeah. ability to create these masterful pieces of works of art, you know, nine minute tracks that just yeah, yeah, yeah. are so immersive for me. Um, and I got a chance to uh, take a long bike ride home. I bike around the city. That's my primary form of transportation and coming home late from the studio once um, on the way back to my house on this very foggy evening. The whole city felt like it was absolutely asleep and it was just these <sighs> beautiful fog like city lights that's and a magic that's a very san francisco thing that it not a lot of people is. get to it's so true it's yeah. thick fog yeah <laughs> very thick but you're in a very urban city you that's know right. it's like very special and the it isn't new york it goes to sleep and it isn't london early it really does so yeah. it's very quiet yeah and all i had just, i had my headphones in and was just listening to boris and it was just probably one of the most transformative like experiences and even in my work which um is 
is heavily influenced. Well, there's a lot of pop cues. It's very accessible. My work yeah. is very accessible in terms yeah. of like the hooks that I use. I, I, I want that. I try to cultivate that. Yeah. Um, but I was so inspired by the work that he was doing. And I just tried to evoke that and pull that into as many references as I could. And mm. it was like a really fun inspiration to hear something so moving and just take it like, how can I, how can I pull this into what I've got? Yeah. Where, where does it live and how can it feel right? Yeah. And that was really, really enjoyable. I, I think that it, like when you're, you know, not confined to genre norms mm. or traditions and you can find inspiration in whatever form of the palette yeah. is speaking to you at that moment and bring it into your work um, is so exciting and so thrilling. And so to have that um, ability where I could bring a little bit of Boris, yeah. a little bit of Boris yeah. into the mix and just yeah. like really bring that, bring that vibe in. It was okay. 90s sounds. So I've heard, oh, th- yes. I, I heard this in some of your, yes. your tracks yes. and I've, I've incorporated it uh, yes. into some of my stuff kind of uh, not even like, even really like consciously. Um, but when I, at Burning Man, I heard um, Gorgon City. Yeah. Gorgon City really, I mean, really uh, incorporates some 90s sounds really well. And it's, it was incredible. I was just, I had the time, I was so, so delighted uh, eating my can of soup uh, <laughs> next to the bar. <laughs> pro tip, reference pro, pro uh, tip. episode number, I wish we knew what it was. <laughs> you, know, like, you could like a footnote. Like, pro, pro tip, bro see, tip. <laughs> see episode, because you unpack all of your burn, Burning Man pro tip. Oh, yeah. Um, it was with uh, Che Cherry. Yeah. And yep. I just, Love how you were like breaking it down. Yeah. Burning Man debrief. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And your pro tip around the can, like have it's the best. That's that's the top one, number one for I, sure. I want to go to Burning Man. I've no. Oh, you got to go. I'm. I'm. I want to go, but I want to go with you. Yes. Yeah. No, really hoping. Gotta it, happen. Really hoping it pulls through. I want to be there at that set it when will. you play a whole set of your oh, yeah. your original music. I yeah. want to be there. Th- this next year is still up in the air just because of uh, friends' wedding and uh, uh, campus may or may not be doing it again this year. They will for sure going forward, but this year maybe not. So it's a little up in the air, but um, you know we'll, we'll try to make it happen for sure. Um, but ninety sounds, ninety sounds. Oh yeah, are, we were talking about ninety sounds. Yeah, ninety sounds. 90 sounds. Yeah, that yeah. ninety sounds are emerging yeah. you know, in so many different facets. And I think for a couple of years we've seen 90, 90 nostalgia, mm. you know, play out in in so many different forms. Um, and it's great to see that sort of still infused yeah. in so many different sounds. And um, even a track that I just finished felt yeah. like steeped in like right. 90s sounds because you just sometimes it's so you just can't good. not you yeah. just have to like it's so, it. they're so it's, effective uh, and I, I'm really excited too because I have um, I have I have this thing where I like to collect um, really obscure sample packs yeah. and and contact packs yeah. and I have these two contact packs or maybe maybe four that are like they're literally uh, somebody went through and took all a, a whole bunch of these um, uh, like best service uh, sound packs. That's mm-hmm. what they're called. Best service or something like that uh, from the 90s. And they turn them into contact sample packs. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's like, it's like you know, 60, 80 gigs of, of 90 sounds. And so all I got to do is just pull it up and just, and this is something I've been doing is just, you know, pull it up just like you would any other synth and just play around with it. You know, some of them have limited range, but you just kind of see what you can, what you yeah. can throw in there. And, and those are like, those you don't have to feel bad about like, oh, this isn't, you know, this isn't very original. That's not the point. The, yeah, the, the point p- is to inject this little flavor of, you know, like whether it's the, you know, <clears throat> what's that, that sample from those fucking 90s like house songs like oh there it is or, you know, like, <laughs> shit like that you know what I mean like those little fucking things that are just so yeah. so so dripping in, in 90s you know it is as if you have a salt and pepper shaker for 90s oh that yeah you can sprinkle all of them that's yes, exactly right yeah <laughs> needs a little more yeah <laughs> give it a little more right just douse it in 90s or, or, or hold back you know a little sure. 90s. Yeah. just a dusting a of 90s nuts. yeah <laughs> You this, only live once. You, why not? <laughs> <You're right. laughs> why the hell not? Oh, I, I think that um, the the fun part about music is the exploration of the different genres that inspire. Yeah. And uh, my, I grew up. I've mentioned it a couple of times, but in a conservative space, and so the church was a part of that. And I wanted um, a gospel voice. So I wanted to have a cue in one of my tracks to where I came from and my roots in, in gospel music. And I really have always resonated with a specific style of gospel music, a very soulful voice. Um, 
and that's been a common representation in house music. It's diva house, and there's so much of it that does that do it. But in my in my world, it was a connection to a traditional gospel styling with a very mm. specific style of ad lib. And uh, it, there's an old gospel track that I've known for a big part of my life, and has came out over 20 years ago. And it's you know probably 20 years ago I think yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it's been a minute it's been a minute since yeah. I was like two, two, this, and this Vocal is even house. this particular track is a gospel track so it wasn't even in the electronic space and it was by Mary Mary and so I go out on a quest to find a gospel singer and uh, finding a vocalist for for anyone that's you know working as a producer is, is tricky it's difficult very hard it's very hard yeah what do you do when you picture a voice, when your track needs a voice, but you don't know when a voice, and where do you go? How do you find a voice? Might be the hardest thing. It is. Honest. It's really true, especially yeah. if, you know, if you're if you're not vocal dependent. Okay, well, you know that's great. Easy. Like you're yeah. free. Yeah. That. But if your track is not just like <clears throat> hoping for, if it needs a vocal, yeah. you know, if that's what the the track is designed around, is really difficult because it got to be the right voice. What do you do? Where do you go? Uh, so I started a search, and that led me um, to a post that someone posted this little clip. They filmed the Oakland Interfaith Gospel Choir doing a song, and they filmed it from the back choir on an iPhone, and they posted that video to Facebook, and they tagged the soloist. And listening on this really poor audio, you could just feel the energy from this person's vocals, and she was igniting the room. And her gospel style and instincts was like absolutely embodying everything I was feeling from Mary Mary and everything I wanted to pull into this track. So then it was like, okay, well, how do I, I mean, what, I'm a creeper from the internet. I can't just be like, hello, you've <laughs> never heard of me. You don't know me at all. And I'd like you to sing on my track. And uh, I haven't published anything. I'm not on any label yet. You know, I didn't yeah. have any like credentials. Right. I couldn't be like, oh, well, you know, yeah. top 100. I'm yeah. streamed a million times. Yeah. I didn't have <laughs> yeah. that. So I mean, it was really difficult. Like, how do you reach out? Yeah. Uh, and so uh, I tried every social media platform I could to reach this person. And uh, the, she didn't respond to any of them. And I tried one last attempt. And I sent a repaying um, on one of them. And thankfully, got a reply that day. And she said that she would be open to it. And I was so excited. And I welcomed over to come over to my, my studio in San Francisco. I have a music studio set up there. And I said, this is going to be great. Let's meet. Let's talk about this track. Let's get a vibe for it. Let's meet each other and let's see what happens. And she came over. Uh, we sat down and I said, this is going to sound crazy, but there's an old gospel track that I love that I'm, I'm pulling an ether in, in terms of like, the, the style of the, of the vocals that I want to, I mean, this lyrically has nothing to do with it, but I just want to capture some essence of that. Mm. And so I push play on the track and she stops me right there. She's like, wait, wait, hold up. She's like, I just performed this track last week. What? And this is not a pop, this is not a mainstream Holy track. Shit. She's like, I just, I just performed this track last week. What? No way. This is a sign. It's an omen. And we crank it up. And then we just, in the, at the top of our lungs, we sing this old track together. Um, and it felt, like I'd, it felt like I'd found an old friend. We had wow. chills all over. And she was like, my friends are never going to believe this. <laughs> Here I am with this white boy in San Francisco. And he's singing a Mary Mary song with me. And wow. we hit it off forever. And she blew it away. Uh, and she it was such a great vibe that she went from the, the gospel style track to a track that a mm. track that I built around this uh, given homage to disco and that funky style bass. And so she picked she did that track as well. She did two tracks on the project um, and is a, such a great friend and is such a beautiful light. And That's anything amazing. is possible. Like it's so, so possible. Yeah. That's, you know, uh, the power of music uh, can bypass uh, the, the, the fact of being an Internet creeper. <laughs> that's how powerful it is because <laughs> i had the same experience you, did you really uh, yeah you had to reach out to someone like online yeah, like hi yeah. you don't know i me. was just i was just browsing on instagram and my buddy lives in uh, laguna beach and he uh he makes these like uh, agave surfboards and stuff cool. very very laguna beach i mean yeah, it's super really? cool and skateboards and all this like art and stuff it's oh amazing i mean does he surf too too i'm sure he like oh yeah must be a huge yeah fan, yeah skater yeah, yeah skater yeah, yeah. surfer yeah, yeah. um it, i mean so it was a uh a, a, a shameless excuse to go down to laguna beach uh-huh. um the, the plan was to go to see him but um serendipitously um i, I stumbled across someone he had taken a photo with 
and just go onto her page. And she had all these, uh, all these videos uh, of her just in her bare ass apartment. Like, you know, she had just moved into this place, nothing yeah. on the walls, a couple posters. Yeah. Um, but she's got, you know, her camera phone and she's and a guitar and she's just, you know, doing these covers, uh, in her own style and singing, you know, and, and, and playing guitar. Mm -hmm. And her voice was just so good. It was so good that it, that it transcended, just like you said, the, the poor, it wasn't, yes. the, her, her audio quality wasn't that bad. I mean, it was, it was actually pretty good considering a bare apartment, no acoustic treatment, oh, just, gosh. you know, guitar, you know, just literally phone here, guitar, guitar voice. And it sounded pretty, pretty amazing actually. Um, and I listened to a bunch of them and I just kept, I mean, I, I listened, I listened to some of them 50 times, 60 times, just on repeat because they're minute loops, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and I found myself like going back and I'm like, all right, I got to reach out to her. And so I, I sent her a message and. Um, I was like, we got to, I don't know what, how, in what capacity we're going to, you know, I, I would like to work, but I, with you, but I know you have an, a, an amazing voice yeah. and, um, and I have a couple ideas. And so I, I sent her, um, this track that I've been working on and, um, she was going to try to, you know, write over it and she did, but you know, it didn't really work. That didn't work out because the track was kind of a little too full already. Oh, sure. Didn't have as much room for Didn't her. have so much room, which uh, in hindsight, I was like, absolutely. Um, but she was like, but I did. You know, I wrote these lyrics um, kind of recently, and, and my friend, she had her friend showed up that played guitar, um, and she played guitar as well. And, you know, um, so she's like, you know, I, I wrote the song, and so I fucking just drove down to Laguna Beach, and I, you know. Oh, how cool is that? And, yeah, so I drove, we drove, my buddy and I drove right down to her apartment, and then we just showed up at, like, you know, 8 p.m. or something. And I brought my whole recording set up. I had a, a, a Shure um, a SM uh, what, no, doesn't matter. Uh, sure. Mike, uh, my mixer, my computer with Ableton. And I just literally just, I mean, uh, well, the microphone Wait, kind of, how did you do it? If the room wasn't acoustically treated. Well, so that's the, mic the microphone does kind of matter. It, it's the, uh, the sure SM seven B that's it. So it's the broadcast one that you see in a lot of the top end, mm -hmm. um, uh, podcasts, record radio studios. It's, Is it dynamic? Uh, it's, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, Probably, if I had to pick my favorite mic, it's oh. it's that mic, yep. um, because it's fantastic for broadcast. I mean, yep. it makes your voice sound incredible. Has that radio sound, also uh, really good for uh, poorly acoustically treated uh, environments, because it has a very small, uh, has a very wide rejection radius, so it only picks up what's right here, which is kind of classic dynamic. Which yep. it actually sounds very similar to these mics that we're talking into now, um, just better you know even better these mics sound great but it sounds even better um and uh it was the perfect mic for that situation i mean it, 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 we recorded her her guitar we recorded her friend's guitar part we, and then recorded just her vocals and she just kind of listened to the recording of the guitar in the headphones and then sang over it she had never recorded anything other than on her phone and you know, the, the whole thing was, uh, I think I sped it up a little bit and I, and I, um, edited, uh, did to a certain degree and kind of, but I mean, for the most part, it's just, it's just the song that she wrote, but I was able to take that. And from there, it's so much, e I mean, I really do believe like if you can start with the vocals, start with the fucking vocals. Cause it makes everything so much easier afterwards. So much easier. And that was on the, my, it was song, the second song on my Indigo oh, album. Yeah. And it's very kind of shoegazy and it's, it's just perfect. I mean, the song, her, her lyrics, the vocals, the, everything that I added is kind of just dripping with that moment, that kind of beachy, yeah. like, you know, yeah. vibe of, of young love and that yeah. sort of thing. I think she had written the song kind of, you know, uh, based on a relationship experience that she had had or something. Um, but it turned out, it just turned out like amazing. It's one of my favorite songs that I've, I think I've ever made, you know, and just from being that internet creeper, you know. That's the, the special part of taking the risk and just reaching yeah. out. And yeah. uh, I've tried that strategy actually with trying to get more connected to more DJs who are more into music and find other collaborators, other vocalists potentially. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had this thought of like, Oh, maybe I can do that via LinkedIn. Like maybe that's a great way to mm. get connected. Cause you find out people post, put like, Oh, the producer of someone or DJ or maybe vocalist. 
Um, and I sent out like 20 notes a few weeks ago. And he back from <laughs> not one. So you found out that <laughs> the, the music the right. industry is terrible at LinkedIn. Yeah, I don't think they that's do not the right use, place. No, not, at not at all. No. Like in the corporate world, we're all about that. Like, oh, we're yeah. All over. Oh, that. yeah. 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 Not in the music world. I, I think the music world should be. Because I mean be that's that's where like you know if you want a job at SoundCloud yes or f- even I, I well, I've well, looked at even like festivals and yeah. like uh, oh yeah um, you know big record labels yep. they're all over you know like that's where you go to find recruiters yeah. for these places you know uh, totally and even but even a you know a, a community like uh, of just music makers in any given city it can yeah. feel. Like you, maybe you want to meet other people who are st- and stirring the struggle and the victory of making being a maker of some kind in your city, and it can right. be hard to figure out how to do that or how to get connected. Uh, I guess. Uh, pro tip: Don't use LinkedIn. Don't. Use <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, scroll Instagram right, and like right. hope for the best. You find. I, I, I tend to think that Instagram is the best. Yeah. Yeah. DMs. Because it, that's exactly what you're just finding. Yes. I mean, that's where everyone's at right now. It's when the the youth is at. Um, you know, electronic music is very youthful, regardless of how old you are. Yeah, true, true, um, true. That's and, very true. And people are just posting, you know, these little. It's very, you know, there's there's way less you know, posts on politics, and there's way less. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, uh, cr- crazy fucking you know arguments and Facebook, all this bullshit. You know, so it's it really lends itself to um, to finding people's you know source of, of creativity and their inspiration and sharing it with people you know oh totally um, and and even more so than like SoundCloud because you know SoundCloud people I've I've messaged people on SoundCloud and I'm not even joking you like four years later four years four years I oh, got I one recently like four months yeah for me. I've no, never no. I've never four, like, years wait, later, four years later I got someone that was like oh um yeah, four years later. Oh, uh, hey, I'm <laughs> terrible. I'm a little slow. Sorry. People, yeah, people just post their certain sites. You know, they just post their shit, and they that's it. You that's know, it. they're that's just all it is. because you know certain sites are just. It's one of those things where it's like, well, I, I post this here so that people can I can I can point people to it. You know what I mean? But Instagram is where everybody's at. You know, you shoot someone a DM, but um, then it goes out to the side DM, and they, they don't actually see it unless they true click to. Yeah. See. it's a. Sometimes you sometimes get a gamble, friend them it's first. A gamble, it's never I easy. Know. It's never easy. You know. I don't know. Yeah. It's sometimes like, email is even actually the best. I'd oh. say I'd say email, Instagram, and and Facebook. Well, I will, yeah, email was great. Yeah. I just don't know how you get your hands on that. Sometimes you just gotta guess. That's all right. Yeah. A boy named Barbara at gmail.com. Yeah. You don't have to guess. <laughs> hey. You don't. Have, I'll give that one away for free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I. Did an experiment where we put up a, a site, and it was a good process. I had to, I had to build out a website for the, the brand bef- before it's all getting replaced. But uh, I built it out, and I had this wonderful partner in this, and she's this great web person out of Brooklyn, and her name is Kristen. She's just absolutely a delight on every level. I love working with her. We built out this site, I'm really proud of it, but um, it included a form, um, so you could like a contact us form. And now I get to be the recipient of about 20 to 30 spam emails a day. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the joys. That's great. The joys. That. It's just, just like, yeah. Uh, That's so good. <laughs> lesson learned. Now I yeah. know why they put those, like, verify that you're human. Yes. What else we, I'm not a robot. And we live in this world yeah. that we literally have to prove that we're human. Yeah. We literally have to go through an authentication process right. to make sure right. that we're actually human. Sad. Sad. It's a commentary. <laughs> it's a commentary. But, you know, you're right. Should I have done it? <laughs> cool, man. Well, um, I think we should wrap this up. This is officially the longest podcast of all of them. We're at two hours and 36 minutes. Wow, we can keep going. We could. I've got a solid another hour. I, know, I, I don't know. want anyone to beat this record. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can always beat it again. Um, That's right. That's right. My yearly check-ins. Yeah. The, so The annual visits. Exactly. Do you have any last burning questions? What did you... <sighs> No, okay, we get we cut an hour and two hours and thirty minutes. We yeah. covered it. We covered it all. Yes, yeah. I, I I'm sure I will. I definitely do. Um, I I have to be back here actually semi early tomorrow because uh, we're we're finishing servicing the uh, the lights. Do you need to? I don't sleep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, too, uh, it, the longer we go, uh, the more difficult it becomes to uh, process these things because <laughs> I realized I realized that. Uh, Ableton will reject uh, audio files longer than two hours. 
Wait, we've crossed that border. Oh, yeah, a, a while ago. <laughs> 30 minutes ago. Actually. 36 minutes ago. 37. <laughs> what, well, what are we going to do about that? Well, so you just have to you have to get a little tricky. So what I do is I, I upload, I, I bring the uh, video file into Premiere, which obviously it's meant for like movies and stuff. So it'll take a two thirty eight minute, uh, two hour, 38 minute uh, video file. And I cut the I, I cut the video file in half, or the audio the audio HP file in half, and I export both of them, and then I bring those into Ableton. Uh, I bring them in one at a time, yeah, right. And I process them one at a time, and then yeah. I bring those two separate audio files right back into Premiere. Just put them up next to each other, and boom, you've got the full thing. So you get a little bit tricky. Um, Your prowess of a workaround and solving <laughs> it just never ceases to amaze me. Uh, and then I, maybe there'll be an opportunity to, even before I come back uh, as a point name Barbara, mm -hmm. give you a yearly update. Yeah. Maybe I can come back and uh, I can interview. Sure. I will put together a list of questions. Yeah. Um, and, and hammer you away with 20 questions. For, and maybe we could even um, ask people to submit a question. Sure. And I could curate a list of uh, questions and, and flip the script on you <laughs> and put you in the hot seat. I like it. Okay. I'm into it. All right. So yeah. I'm, I'm into this thing. I'm big into these headphones and I just want Dude. another excuse to wear them. Right. They're great. Freaking love Fucking them. great. Thanks again to Pioneer. I mean. Yeah. That, uh, that's why I've, I've moved 100% to these just because they're so comfortable. They sound fantastic. My mixes have gotten uh, better. Um, yeah. I think, they, I think they, they killed the game. Uh, the I, H HRM 6s. My my ears will hate me when I go home and put on my old my regular old headphones. Uh, they're gonna smell these ones on you. Completely ruined Where me. Where have you been? I'm having an affair. <laughs> it's under green headphones. That's like your drum and bass mistress. Exactly right. You're, you're having an affair Sunday. Yes, yeah. Sunday afternoon. It's planned. Oh my! See here we go talking again, and now yeah. we're in it all over I again. Know, okay, so you were just about all to right. sign off, yeah. and here I ruined that. I'm like, got all. Okay, I'll leave. How do you, right. sign, how do you uh, sign off? Well, uh, th I'm gonna thank you, and then uh, anything you want to plug. Oh, uh, thank you to Halcyon. Well, yeah, but we're going to do that. Uh, new websites. Oh, yes. SoundCloud. Oh, for me. Yeah, for you. <laughs> <laughs> new to this. It's my first interview. <laughs> right. It's my right. first interview. Don't call it an interview. It's a press. It's my press. It's my press circuit. Yeah. Podcast. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm. It's a conversation. I kind of feel good about calling it an interview. Okay, sure. Makes me feel like I. Yeah. <laughs> as a. I'd like to thank members of the press because your support <laughs> <laughs> means a lot to me. And, uh, they want to have some babies you can kiss. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yes, uh, so uh, it'll be a boy named Barbara dot com. Yeah, it will be where you can hear the music. It'll only be available there. It will not be available in streaming platforms oh. or purchase until it is released. Um, and I really highly encourage you to follow me on Instagram because, as we've just discussed in great detail, that's the place to be for anyone. Um, yeah. It's Cal Cal Hudson, so C A L C A L Hudson, nice. and is my handle. And I'll, I'll see you there. I'll, I'll respond to you about four years after you visit. <laughs> Right on time. <laughs> I will talk to you in about, what is that, 2023? Yes, exactly. I'll be getting right. back to you. <laughs> okay, so don't hold me to it. Anything anything under four years, I'm yeah. doing good. I'm really on right. top of the curve here. Right. Just simmer in that other DM box. Oh, yeah. 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 Let it cool off. Let it cool off. Don't be so, don't be so hot. <laughs> right. It's so quick. <laughs> All right. I got to thank uh, everyone here at Halcyon uh, for letting us host. Uh, Gina, Rhea, Leah, Jojo, Dean, Mikey, Payton. Um, it's fantastic. This is the best place we could possibly uh, host this podcast. I'm Scott Brio, and uh, this has been episode number 40 with uh, Caleb Hudson, a.k.a. A Boy Named Barbara. Uh, if you want to check out our other episodes, we're on every major pl streaming platform, SoundCloud, Instagram, MixCloud, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, all of them. So... Uh, <laughs> Um, this has been the Voice of Electronic Music, and uh, we will see you guys on the next one. Peace out. You got you to say peace out. Peace out. There we go. <laughs> <laughs>